Today, we have two guests on the podcast. My first guest is a former amateur kickboxing, boxing, MMA fighter, trained out of the world-famous, highly respected Team Quest. He's also a RF BJJ checkmat black belt, which basically means he could choke me out any moment he wants to throw me around like a leftover piece of pizza. But that's cool. Um, but most importantly, he's one of my best friends that I've known for many years. He frequently hangs around other members of Suicide Sound, so he's very close to our circle, and that's why we love him very much. My next guest has toured the world countless times, has played countless club, arena, festival stages worldwide. He's my brother for life, bass player for Suicide Silence. Let's get into it. Nick Vega and Dan Kenny. Thank you guys for being here. Thank you for making the uh, Drive DK. My, uh, my brother and a bass player for how many years? I've been in the band since 08. 08. December of 08. So uh, you do the math. Wow. Oh, wait, that's <laughs> going on. Uh, that's 13 08, years almost. 9, 10, 11, 13. 13. Yeah. 13 years. That's crazy. Wow. Right? Sick. How long have I, have I known you, Nick? Oh, fuck. 2004, I think. 2004. I think so. Damn. 2006, maybe? I know you for a while because me, I was jamming with my cousin Mike in his garage in uh, Elsinore for a while, and that's how uh, I, I I met you. I remember our, my first time meeting you. We were jamming the Skinny Magazine party at the Pins and Pockets now, and I roll up and um, Mike's like, "Hey, dude, you mind if our my cousin jams with us?" And I'm like, "Yeah." Does he know the transitions of songs? He's like, "Yeah," and he's such a solid musician like yourself, like you guys. Uh -huh. I took his word for it without meeting you. I'm like, "Cool, where's this guy at?" He's like, "Oh, he's over there." I look on stage and right behind the fucking our singer's mic stand, this dude's sprawled out laying on the floor. I'm like, it's odd. I'm like, you don't see that often, right? Just Garza chill. was? Garza. Just, we never said a word. And during our set, I think we were covering an unsung from Helmet. And we're, you know, we're straight right from the fucking right. drums. And he's got a point to him. He's fucking mop killing as hard as you can. I'm like, fuck yeah. Like, he's right there in the pocket. And I was, I was like, dude, this guy's my homie for life now. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why I just laid on a stage until the show started. It's just I'm like the same old situation, you know, you've like been here a million times. It's what cats do when you're a cat. That's true. What's, what's your uh, animal? A deer? It's, uh, I think it's I might have moved on from a deer. Moved on? Yeah. How about? To a, to a quokka. The quokka? Those little Australian the, like things. Wombat? The little Australian things that just smile, but they'll fucking kill you. Hell I like yeah. that. Yeah, they're, they're cute as fuck. DK Quokka, how about you, Nick? <laughs> I would say like <laughs> sloth. <laughs> my brother, sloth? my brother has a good one for you. For me, yeah. he says he, Nick always looks like a desert tortoise. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he just always Nick always looks so thirsty, man. He's just thirsty. Got the water, <laughs> got the seltzer. He's got two drinks right now. That's Cover, insane. Double fisting. What animal you say you are? Huh? I would. I don't know. I guess a dog or a bull. <laughs> but then everyone says cool. like, oh, you're you know May, you're a tortoise, so you know the the bulls are spirit animal. I'm like, nah, I don't know. I don't know about what Garza, have you moved on from chupacabra or what? I don't know. It's gone on from turtle <laughs> to chupacabra to cat. Cat, turtle. Uh, three months ago, someone called me a dragon. <laughs> Sick. It might. It, it might have been the hair. I'm, I don't think. I don't think I, I've earned the fucking term dragon. <laughs> that. That's a pretty cool. It's not even a real animal. That's like a mystical being. I mean, I'm not. I'm not there yet. Yeah, yeah Bruce Lee's the. He's little dragon. That's his. Is that's he? his name. He's known as little dragon. Yeah, he. Yeah, Bruce Lee's earned that. That, that one for sure. <laughs> God, dragon. For, yeah, for martial arts, what's the funny? For martial arts, I uh, always like you know thought, oh, you know, because the eight points of striking, the hands, the fucking knees, elbows, and shins, yeah, also the feet too. But I wanted a dragon and a tiger, you know, like the old school martial arts. But I got the dragon, not so much for Bruce Lee, but just like you know, kind of martial arts. Yeah, yeah. How long have you been training? Oh fuck, I had my surgery in two thousand four, and two years later, I had my first Muay Thai fight. In 2006, and so fuck. Was that 15 years? 16 years? Yeah. Yeah. Dang. Still trying to just. It's my it's my physical therapy of staying healthy. You know? For sure. It's the yeah. Yeah. It's your physical uh, therapy. I mean, of course. I mean, you know, it's your it's your spiritual, your emotional, yeah. your your mental. Definitely. You know, and it, it also helps out your uh, 
your friends. I'm pretty sure DK might be able to back me up on this, but I, we feel kind of safe when we're hanging out with you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, no, for I sure. Mean, but I'm not, yeah. I'm, not, I'm not just the goon, the enforcer, you know? It's like, know. I'm down to jam with you guys and just bro down. But yeah. like, I can have more fun knowing that I have a friend with me who could do some karate, you know? Yeah. yeah. Well, remember when we were in <laughs> yeah. Old Town, dude? Remember you guys we were in Old Town? That Are you freaking... t- talk about this story all the time, but I don't remember it. So we're walking down the street after lunch or whatever, and some guy's like, oh, nice hair to you. Oh yeah, some guy tried to try to punk me, and I was right. He didn't know I was with you guys, right behind you guys. I'm on a nice face. <laughs> he looked at me, and I was like looking in his soul, like, dude, I almost turn your face into a fucking. Sm-. Sorry, I didn't mean curse. Like, oh, egg, cr- I crush your skull like an egg carton if I wanted to. I wouldn't do that, but I was like, it's right here if you want it, dude. And you were just seeing like, oh shit. Just, yeah, know, I must have weird. been a completely shit face because I don't remember <laughs> that at all. Yeah. Well, just like yeah. Saturday night, the fight. He's probably like nice face. I was like, probably like, yeah, it does have a nice face. <laughs> uh, thank you, man. I have a nice face, too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's so weird. That's like, he must have been, uh, there were younger bros. Yeah. Young, by younger, I mean like probably mid-20s. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's funny that that's younger now. Just yeah. that was true, their, true. They were in that bully mentality, you know? Like, yeah. It's I've so never weird. Been about that life. Just he, lo- looking for trouble. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's super strange. Like, I mean... I can't even imagine being them. Like they thought I was alone, so they're like, "We're we're, we're going to pick on this guy." Yeah, they're barking up the wrong tree. They didn't know they're so fucking gorilla on the tree. Like, oh, shit. <laughs> they, they fucking say something, and like Nate Figueroa just comes out of, out of the bushes. <laughs> so, oh, he's not alone. Of course not, bro. No that's, man. That's like back in the day when he would carry a baseball bat. I'm like, you going to the batting cages? He's like, no, in case shit goes wrong. I'm like, well, just keep training at Team Quest, dude. And he told me about something happened with you guys, and I was like, okay, DK is my new best friend. Because not new best friend, but you know what I mean. Like he lives close. I'm gonna hang out with him. And same shit, be hiding in the bushes, be like, waiting for it. Like it's not something that they want. It's what they fucking need in life. You know. You so your, your spirit animal is something that hides in the bushes. So basically, what you're saying, a gorilla is he a gorilla? A gorilla. Yeah, you just sit there <laughs> eating bananas by yourself, just wait, <laughs> waiting for something to go wrong with one of your friends. Have we officially introduced Nick? Oh no, but I was planning on doing a proper, proper introduction when the episode's over. I'm gonna do a whole separate thing, so it's okay. it's, it's right here. Okay. So just, it's gonna so, just a bro hanging out. Yeah, I, I'm gonna say some, and then it's gonna pop into the Nick, episode. Nick, but Nick, babe, thank Nick, you. I appreciate Nick, that. Uh, Nick plays in Brujeria. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's yeah, he's Nick. one of the mask. Right. That'd be sick, dude. I know. Nick, Nick Vega is a, a very, very close friend, very tight knit with, with with us. Um, I've known you for a long time, and you yeah. and you actually become friends with pretty much my uh, our entire band. Yeah, you yeah, know, man. so uh, which is um, kind of a rare thing where someone is can hang out with. When you're out in Spencula, you're you're hanging out with DK, you're hanging out with Mark. If you're here, we're hanging out with me. Yeah, of course, it's pretty cool. It's it's cool. It is cool because I'm blessed in life with like martial arts and music. You know, I have like people that are yeah. fucking very passionate Good. and make it their lifestyle. So like you know, me, I'm kind of like the wandering freaking tumbleweed, like in between the two different realms. There's yeah. only a handful of people I can think of that literally could just like hang out with each of our band members on their own, you know? Yeah. Like know each other well enough to be like, I'm gonna hit up. We fucking hang out to shit tug because we live right down the street. Yeah. But fucking. Yeah, I mean, who else, who else can do that? My brother could do it. You're true. But yeah. he's also he's us. He's family though. He's already in my world for sure. But I don't know. There's a handful of people that for sure can do yeah, that. Yeah, man. You're you're a rare guy. You're you're. Nick Vega is a very lovable guy, a very pure hearted oh. soul. You know? <laughs> the the gorilla. Yeah. <laughs> a very pure hearted gorilla that the fucking and you gorilla. never no, I'm not a gorilla. He's a happy gorilla. Happy More gorilla. like an orangutan. I would say a orangutan. orangutan. Uh, gorillas are cooler, but the gorillas are cooler. Are. And we all know you you will never cross a uh any being yeah. from that species. Yeah, of course. Never. There, there's barriers. Never. You don't. You don't. You know. No matter how nice they they seem, they've been known to rip off your fucking face when, when whenever they want. And I know, I know you have that in you, man. Well, it's like, like I said, it's not. Well, what, I mean, it's not what they want. It's not what you want to do. It's what they need. If they you there's know. gorillas that will completely destroy you. But then there's like that Robin Williams documentary where Coco's just kissing and loving on Robin Williams. That's me. Yeah, I can <laughs> yeah. also rip their arms off too though, <laughs> yeah. if I needed you. You're Coco, but I don't know. You know, Your I, don't, I like trying not to carry myself that way because I hate when people are like, oh, this guy's knocked out so many fucking people. It's like, you don't. Dude, I don't want to have that energy on me. You don't, man. Because you, like the training you did back in the day, like you cracked me once good in, in sparring and I got pissed and I gave him a three piece, fucking three quick kicks to the fucking, to the side of the leg. A three piece. But I was proud. <laughs> I, I was like a proud soda. dad. He popped me in the face and I was like, that's beautiful. And he fucking hit me. <laughs> he Superman punched, that's boom. Beautiful. Like his knuckle hit me right in the fucking zygomatic area. Do you, you know who. I know. I know. I always bring it up to to UDK. Uh, man, I think you would kill it at 
uh, jujitsu. I That's think you would saying, kill dude. it, dude. You, you, you already have that mind and you're already super passionate about it. Yeah, the thing I definitely think I would know is I've watched it for so long and I, I, I know the moves. I just got to practice them and do them. And then I got long ass limbs. But I wrestled for a while, but then I just started partying. Way oh too my f- God. I, s- <laughs> I had to bring it home, dude. Even though it's my belt technically right now. Okay. You got to defend it, but. Explain what that belt is, guys. It's, Go between, for it, Chris. it's between you guys. You guys have some. There you go. There it is. You guys have some weird little. You guys have some weird little belt thing going on with each other. So, so we have a bet uh, for, for those uh, <laughs> only listening. Nick Baker brought over our belt because we do uh, weight loss competitions, and yeah. I beat him three times, and I let him win the fourth time, and uh, he Poor won. Shit. He won the belt for me. They do. You <laughs> do like you do like a uh, like a month to see who could lose more pounds, right? Yeah, just pounds. And whoever yeah. loses the pound gets to keep the the wrestling belt. Well, yeah. at first it was we would bet money, and then like the first one was like okay, and you lost hundred bucks. Did you take us out for drinks though, and spend the money on the drinks? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 You're like, hey, yeah, we went to the bar tab's gonna be yours. Yeah, yeah, that's right. We did go to Rosales, huh? Yeah, yeah Mark. I, Mark I mentioned. I, 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 asked, <laughs> I asked Mark, hey, uh, what's like a sick like uh, pizza spot? And he said that spot, mm-hmm. and I didn't really love it. Oh yeah, no, Mark. I mean, Mark's new shirt. I told him I would wear it for the podcast. Oh yeah, right on. So to be honest with you, just. That kind of pizza, I don't That's really like. That's a sick shirt. I don't think I've seen yeah, that man. one. I want that one. What the fuck? Well, dude, he had an extra large. I was like, dude, I'll we, wear it for the podcast. We man. know this guy who fucking gets metal shirts and like tie dyes them himself. Dude, that's so sick. So like he, Mark just got a death one. It's sick. He got a Morbid Angel one. He does it anyway, like red shit. It all looks crazy. You get a Love purple it. one, dude. Purple and black. Yeah, he'll That'd fucking. If you, fuck. so if you want to send some shirts to him to like tie dye for you, you probably can. Dude, that shirt's fucking sick. I, I just had the black one. I gotta ask him for a new one then. <laughs> That's badass. Sick. Yeah. You you can never have too many t-shirts. Yes, you can. Can you? Yeah. I'm selling them on my Depop because I want fucking a lot of those shirts gone. Number one, a lot of them don't fit anymore. Because I'm, oh, fu- I'm fucking fat. I told it's gonna keep grew up on you. Dude, yeah, I see yeah. you're fat now, dude, dude. Next thing you know, you have little ass titties when you wake up. No, you grew some quarantine titties. <laughs> and then you, little ass quarantine you're titties. Around your belly button, it starts to get a little chubby, you get a little donut. And then, and then the next thing you know, you're fucking struggling to put on your own socks. Oh, man. <laughs> when you got to hold your breath, tie your shoes. Dude, hold, dude, I need to... <gasps> yeah, right on the... I have set on my steps. It's terrible, man. Yeah, it's terrible. What it were we talking up about? On you. Besides me being A lot fat? of shirts. Yeah. Uh, t-shirts. Yeah, shirts. I sell, sell some of them. I've sold some old-ass shirts. that I sold the Deicide long sleeve for 250 bucks. That just is a medium. I wore it when I was a kid. But it's, you can't get it anymore. You know, yeah. vintage metal shirts are... Popular. They're big, dude. Anything vintage, that's like a whole scene. Do you think down down the road, at some point, you think you'll regret selling those t-shirts? No, no, really. No. I really like look at my I look I at my closet and all the shirts that I do wear. I rotate like twenty shirts. Yeah, yeah. Same. And then all I have boxes full of shirts. I have like eighty five more other shirts that just sit in a box. Yeah. The, someone would appreciate. Someone would wear. You know. True. True. So I do sell some of them. Some of them are cheap. I gave some to. I have, I gave away accidentally gave away like some old Morbid Angel shirts. I put them in the wrong pile. Oh, so you can't ask for them back. But they, no, 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 they, they went into fucking a Goodwill box. Okay. So like they're okay. gonna see these old Morbid Angel shirts that <laughs> are medium and be like, well, we can't give this away because right? it has a fucking dying angel on it. Uh, but, that, those would be cool to hang on to. I well, know. Like I uh, Jesse Tate, who was in a band with me with Mike, your cousin. Yeah. Um, he liked my Sepultura Chaos ID shirt so much, and I was like, it's yours, bro. So he still has that, it. It's still, it's, I mean, it's years old, but still seeing that shirt, I'm like, fuck yeah, it, it, I, it made the fuck. That's a shirt I'd love to have. That was a sick shirt. It's one of the best records ever. I know. I've always wanted a, I have like a list of shirts I want, and uh, <laughs> and uh, and Roots is like, of course, one of those like, but dude, dude, if you get like, if you find the shirt you want, on, like, it's it's eBay for, yeah. for, for me. Man, if you get a shirt from the 90s, you're, you're looking at a pretty hefty if you, uh, price if you, tag. Right? If you download that app Depop, yeah. the one I sell shirts on, you could like type in shirts and like look what people are selling themselves. Oh, okay. They're vintage. You know, I find yeah. old fucking Ultimate Warrior shirts on there. Sick. Old Dallas Sick. Cowboy long sleeves, like just really cool shit on there. And some people like don't even know what they have. So like, it's only 20 bucks. You're like, yeah. ooh. Yeah, it's like finding Dude. a jackpot at like a yard sale or some shit. For You're sure. Like, what? Yeah. yeah, it's a sick, it's a sick ass website. It's a sick idea. It's just like eBay for like 
clothes. Because I would think cool. people would have like a specialty b- boutique specifically for that, you know, like those yeah. rare band shirts. Like how you're saying, there's a website for it. it makes it even easier. You don't have to go anywhere. Just boom. Oh, do yeah. These, these, right these people on that website, they make their own little stores. And like you see someone has like a bunch of, they'll have a bunch of metal shit. You're yeah. like, perfect. I'm going to look through all of this shit. Sick. Yeah, I've sold hundreds, tons of shit on there already. Oh, yeah. Wow. Oh, well, it makes sense. I mean, just this morning, it pops in my head like once a month how I just regret selling or just, or giving away or throwing away all all those T-shirts that I'm now on eBay looking to, like to rebuy. But yeah. but but then again, I mean, you do outgrow them. Like there, I remember them. They're mediums, and now you wear larges. As you get older, yeah. you want like baggier shirts. Yeah, just, for sure. I mean, I what know. the fuck am I gonna do with a old ass gray medium necrophagia shirt? Like, I yeah. mean, it, it was the first time he came over here and brought the shirt with him. It's the first yeah. first printing of shirts. I was like, fuck it, I'll sell it. There you go. What if it was large? If it was large and gray. That it was still pretty worn though. So I don't know. I like my shirts a little bit newer looking. Really? Yeah. Oh, okay. I, I like mean, I like I like the fucking beat up like. Yeah. You have the, fucking holes in your pants, dude. <laughs> I, f- I fell, dude. What the fuck? Yeah, I got, right. I got like, fucking holes you in. You fucking fell online and bought it some jeans. <laughs> you do a power slide, freaking uh, tenacious D power slide. Just ripping these out. I live my life, dude. Fuck yeah. I live. I live life, dude. Oh, you got some pants under there, though. <laughs> yeah, I got some fucking Smash. Nike tights, dude. Oh, so those are good so for you, nogi. You so back full circle. You should do ro- nogi, and you guys should start oh, training too, man. I, I'm so. It'll happen. I'm one of my adjectives is. Lazy for sure. I'm very lazy. That's, my middle, that's my middle name. Dude. I love lazy. Yeah. Like, oh, what did you do all day? Watched so much forensic files and I made some great lunch. Nice. Like, that's lazy. But yeah. the gym is open. I know and I could go. I just, <laughs> and also, I, I smoked cigarettes for fucking like 14 years and it's been almost like a year since I stopped. It'll be a year in May. But damn, I swear my lungs are still fucked up from it. Like it's like I run I run up the stairs and I'm just like <sighs> <laughs> No, sucks. but like we horseplay like whenever we're watching fights and stuff and we have a couple of drinks, like you wanna wrestle and shit, so we throw it out oh, and then yeah. Missy jumps in, I'm freaking wrestling both of you well, at the same just, time. It, yeah. It makes you feel like when you're little kids and you and your cousins just start yeah. fucking throwing pillows at each other and yeah, yeah. yeah jumping off the couch. <laughs> we, we never get yeah. serious. We're just yeah, laughing. Never. We're laughing the whole time. The whole time, dude. Yeah. Yeah, that, that feeling of being a kid never really like leaves you of just wrestling and being an idiot. No, that's that's it's what which is that's being, what happens. being in good company so you no, that's what, when you get that's what when you get hammered, you start acting like a kid again. I know, Which, yeah. You can barely speak, can't walk that well. <laughs> so I start crying. You start crying. Well, that was like that dude at the fights. He started horse playing too much. I had to set him straight. I was like, yo, dude, like fucking you gotta you, you can horse play in the crop, you're starting to fucking wander. <laughs> oh my god, dude. Yeah, it sucked. Oh well, he's cool. <laughs> it it it, calmed him, it brought him back down to reality. Yeah, that got a little scuffle on Saturday night after the I, fights. I heard. I just gave him one dinger behind the ear just to like, hey, calm down. And he yeah. was like, oh shit! Like he had no idea like that stuff existed in real life. So he was, all right, I'm cool. I'm yeah, right, cool. All right, I'm back to yeah. normal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's. It, it's very rare, and I I, I, I I wasn't there, but um, based on what you told me <clears throat> earlier, is that the older I get, the more I kind of rethink my uh my feelings towards hitting people yeah i think that some people should get hit it's very it's rare it's rare it's like i said they don't but want like it. they you fucking got, need it like you they gotta be it. like i give them a little smack oh shit i probably shouldn't be like like an idiot yeah they give them they gotta be like a lesson you know yeah it's it's like disciplinary like when you, as, as a child it was from our parents you know yeah it's like all right you know you gotta stay between the lines and shit <laughs> yeah yeah. Some people deserve a nice little. Some people deserve a slap. Some people deserve a knockout punch. Yeah, some totally. people deserve to just go to sleep. Yeah. Oh yeah, dude. Like people who are rude. Oh, yeah. I've done that. People, yeah, you've done that. People who are rude to waitresses and shit. Tell them that yeah, one. You yeah. call them fucking. Or people who just like, I don't know. Oh yeah, you. You just did something where you was, uh, situation was going down right, and you came up behind him. And he just grabbed his neck because he was going to, like, hit a girl or something? Yeah, I was at a bar, and I had my foot, like, waiting to order the next beer, right? And yeah. this, you know, in between a couple here, a guy and his his chick, and then another girl and her girlfriend here. And the guys are all sloppy making out, and I'm asking the girl, I'm like, The guys were making out? No, the guy and his girlfriend are making out. I asked the, the girl with her girlfriend, I'm like, um, do you know them? She's like, not at all. So they're freaking leaning on her so hard. She pushes my, get off me, asshole. The guy turns around and freaking throw a cane maker at her face. Luckily, I was there. So when he swung, I was, dude, right into a fucking arm triangle, just pff, locked him up. And oh, like, man. he was face first on the ground. Wow. Like how they plank or whatever, he was face first. My buddy, everyone there is bouncers, like fighters from the gym. And they come up and yeah. they're like, what the fuck happened? I'm like, he tried to hit the girl and boom, they got him out of there. I put him to sleep. Yeah. 
didn't hit him, wow. just put him to sleep. He just napped him. Yeah, that's uh, that's one, one of those rare uh, things for like, yeah, it's time. It's, like, it's, always, it's usually 90% of the time drinking is involved, too. For sure. Yeah. Because no one really acts like that sober usually, but there's, I don't know. I had an old roommate yeah. where he would he would get too far out of line. I had a, like, hey, dude, like we all we all you know <laughs> do stupid shit and like, oh man, I'm sorry, but like this guy was like way past the line. I'm like, dude, like that needs professional help. But <laughs> I gave I gave him temporary <laughs> professional help. Just just starched him, just put him yeah. out of his misery. Starched him. Yeah, that's like some real life therapy in real time. And it sounds fucked sure. up, dude. I know people are like, dude, you can't just be go hitting people when they're drunk. But this guy was doing so fucking weird shit. Like, when we tell you what happened, you... Uh, what what was it? The story of uh, your roommate? Yeah, that one? okay. Yeah, when I had my I had to cut weed for my fight in Vegas, and all yeah. I had was a case of water, rice cakes, and beef jerky just to snack on until it was time to drop the weight. Yeah, and he tried to like defecate or <laughs> masturbate on him, and I was <laughs> I was cutting weight cranky. And I'm like, dude, not today. And just. 20 ounce blood. I don't know. Just rice cakes are pretty oh, gross, yeah. so he might have made them better. No. <laughs> especially, especially when you're cutting weight, like you're, you got that extra, like, you're just fucking pissed. It's like you're tired and hungry at the same time. You're super hangry, cranky. Oh, sh- yeah, yeah. All that on top of dealing with the crazy freaking roommate going out of, you know, I'm not name dropping anyone. I don't want to put, throw anyone under the bus, but sure. I had to, I had to set him straight. Yeah, yeah you I, have to. I live my life trying not to get starched by, pe- starched by people. Yeah. Starched. Starched. Oh, starched. It's good, <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. It's, it's a way of life. Remember uh, that, that I, I look back on like a few moments in my life where like I wish someone fucking hit me or smacked me. Like, what, what, what the fuck are you doing? Or, yeah. I, or I wish like there's two times maybe I wish like I probably should should have fought that guy. Because sometimes sometimes with so, uh, with with your friends, if you yeah. kind of do a quick duke out, you're like closer. Yeah, you know, of course. there's like there's like that mutual. Oh, I'm like, man, sure. It's like fucking James Lynch and Eddie. Yeah. Oh, they throw, they throw it out? Oh, they threw it out. I, I had to fucking do it. Oh, I would have loved to referee the match. <laughs> I, was, I was a referee. I just kind of uh, just like took them both down with me. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. But yeah, that's, that's, that was just drunken shenanigans after the show. And yeah. Now, look at them. Text back and forth. Nudes to each other. They love each other. No, no. Everything is great. <laughs> like how you're saying, a lot of times, like when even in like, competition in combat sports, your opponent doesn't have to be your enemy. You know, like you don't have to have any like hate or anything towards them to just go in there and like, yo, I'm I'm here to win. I know you are too, so let's go handle this oh, shit. Fuck. And we can drink a beer afterwards if we're cool. If not, then you know, go f- go f yourself. Yeah, I, I'll, yeah. I hate I hate everyone even when I'm playing Monopoly. I'll hate you until it's over. Oh, dude, you're this guy is like he's like you. The way this guy acts when we cut weight for the competition is the way this guy plays board games. Yeah. <laughs> he, he'll call I, I, fouls when there's not a foul. That was definitely a foul. It's like, no, that just wasn't in your favor, so you're calling a foul. So you dude, get the I, lead I again. fucking want. I have to win. Yeah, and if I don't win, not first if last. I don't win, let's play again. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, you guys got me into the uh, board games. You got me in board games, and got me Uno. We got we got Uno here because because I've, of you, dude, Missy. I've always been a big board game, card game guy, always. But especially with quarantine hit, it's like time yeah. to buy fucking fifteen yeah. more games. Hughes and Cues is fun. I like that one. Hughes Jeff, and Q's we throw it on that one. Clues always good. Yeah. That's a Battleship, remember we were throwing on Battleship? Battleship. At, yeah. uh, we have like the so Stone, Stone Church Brewery. Yeah. Oh, you guys, did you, do you guys play with shots? No, no, it was the mini, uh, like the road case. Like the, oh, the, you, the, your, you and your brother would play in the back seat, you know, going on road You can actually shit. play that yeah. on the phone, too, against yeah. somebody. Really? Yeah, they have a battle, battleship app. Ooh, I got, got to get the uh, battleship app. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's <laughs> cool. Not cool plugging battleship, but just saying. You know. yeah. No, battleship was fun because you could talk shit. Tom yeah. got me. Tom Galicchio got me into that. We were, we were playing Battleship for like in Connect Four. You know, just like little games when you're, you know, hang, hanging out with your bros, you know. Yeah, it's fun, man. Remember when the whole pandy happened, like right when the lockdown happened, me and Cece went to a Target and all the board games were gone. All, yeah. all, all of the good ones and all like the ones that suck and no one wanted were, were fucking there. I'm like, all right, if these are left during a fucking pandy, yeah. I'm, I'm not going to fucking buy these now and the, fucking play them, dude. The Darkwing Duck Monopoly set. Oh, shit, like, shit, I mean, shit I haven't even heard of. <laughs> yeah. Fuck I, yeah. I can't even repeat. Like, all like, we wanted, like, you know, Battleship. I think we wanted Uno 2 and, like, it was just, it was nothing, it was fucking wiped out. Yeah, Uno 1's gone for sure. Uno 2 and Uno 2.5 for sure are still on the shelves. Half price clear. Yeah, no one still stolen them. too. Stolen. Yeah. yeah, I mean, Target definitely sold out quick. Even Amazon was sold out of stuff. Damn. Amazon, I did, we definitely got like at least 10 more games when the pandemic started. Damn. We, we got like 25 games now. And then we got hella Switch games. We're fucking set up. Yeah, we throw it set out up. on uh, Trivial Pursuit. Is it Trivial Pursuit? Trivial Pursuit and Family Feud on the Switch. Oh, yeah. It's fun. I feel blessed. I got avatars in those video games. Yeah, yeah. Well, he, had, he has avatars before he even plays them. 
<laughs> we we create his character because he knows we knows he's like he's like our Kramer. He just comes in. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, what are we playing? It's like Nick. It's fucking Tuesday afternoon, man. What are you doing? Nick Kramer. Big nah, up. usually it was after it was after practice. If they were down at doing a trivia night at, at Devilicious oh, in Town before the pandemic. I'd be at either Muay Thai at Team Quest or Jiu Jitsu. Now, Check Matt is not at Team Quest, but I'd be like, Tuesday or Thursday nights, you guys would be there. Yeah, it was, it was Wednesday night. I was saying Wednesday one of the most things I miss about life when life was normal is that we would be able to go Wednesday night to the bar and go to fucking trivia and you could win prizes. We yeah. won fifth, first place before and got $53 Team to, to spend. <laughs> yeah, miss that, the movies, and I miss Movie bowling. Van Buren's still open. You can go watch a double feature. You know that car one. Car oh yeah, the uh, drive-in. The drive-in. The, the, uh, the uh, no, car one. Uh, the, <laughs> the, the one car. where you got to be in your car. <laughs> the drive-in. Luckily, are still my sick. luckily my car is cool. So I used to take a, a inflatable mattress in the bed of my truck and blanket. Brilliant. Just, Brilliant. Right, dude. Yeah, to smoke a little weed. Yeah, yeah. Wake up during the credits. Oh, <laughs> damn. Have you been in there, Garza? The uh, the drive-in here. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, when I was a kid. Oh, you haven't gone. Been, it's been a while. They got good carne asada. Go on a I date, dude. You go on a date. date, dude. Yeah, we'll, we'll go. We'll go on, on a date. There you see go. What, see what movies are playing and fucking just. I mean, you can watch them at home, but nothing beats the theater. Nothing. You know, dude, the theater is so sick, man. I mean, yeah, Dolby what, Atmos, fucking 4K. Do they have new movies or just like they play old shit? They have new movie like releases and stuff. But like, cause like it'll like, now everything's fucking because lockdown like Amazon, Hulu, yeah. HBO, yeah. Go, and all that shit. But they'll also do because they know like other states, everything like Texas is wide open, dude. I know. Dude. You can go to a movie theater and like fucking chum it up to improve. I, uh-huh, I don't I, watch that movie. I know they blah, push blah, blah. they push back the new Ghostbusters till November. They keep pushing it back because they want the fucking people, people to yeah, go see it. Fuck yeah, because it's like a hundred million dollar movie or something. Of course, it's crazy. Yeah. It looks super fun. Yeah, the dude. trailer is great. Yeah, yeah. But the little kids who who. uh Find the ghost mobile. They Sick. like they, they they release all the fucking ghosts on Ectoplasm accident. Ectoplasm and oh, shit. Wow. And all the, they're all their grandpas are like Bill Murray, and Dan Aykroyd. And really? The dad in the movie is Paul Rudd. It looks fucking awesome. That sounds yeah. awesome. Hell yeah, that, that's a movie theater for sure. Yeah, yeah. I want to watch that shit at home where I watch that UFC countdowns. So I want to see it in the theater. Yeah, yeah. Drown the popcorn and butter and shit. Dude, Dude try you to drown, drown the pop. <laughs> drown, drown the popcorn with butter. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Dude, Ghostbusters is what a great movie. One, uh, one and two. Yeah, of course. Instant classic, dude. Fuck, the first one is amazing. I Moranis. know. We were just, we watched that the other day, me and my girl and my roommate, we realized how Rick Moran is just so little. Yeah. <laughs> he's like, he's like looking up at every woman. Oh, yeah, yeah. He's a cool dude, man. Definitely. Yeah, he stopped acting to help, help his wife think she had cancer or something. Yeah. He's like stopped for like 20 years. Now he's back. Which is cool. Really? Yeah, he's coming back, dude. I, I hope he's that. in the new Ghostbusters That'd somewhere. That'd be sick, dude. That'd be pretty cool, man. He fit that part perfectly, oh, dude. Oh, he can get a better dork. Like a lot of actors, no. <laughs> too, that are like, you know, whatever, like they have little men syndrome or whatever. I don't, you know, it, to me, it doesn't matter. We're we're who we were fucking born to be. But um, yeah. a lot of actors, you won't see them next standing next to like a fucking, back in the day, a public phone or a door handle because you could reference their height. So you always see like Tom Cruise and shit. He's fucking sprinting the whole time. So yeah. You can't, you can't relate his height. Oh, dude, I'm, I'm constantly yeah. looking up celebrities' heights. I don't know why. Oh, my or like God. When you I see, always want to know how tall people or are. Or like when you see them making out, like he's probably standing on a half apple or full oh, apple dude, box. Oh, dude, Sylvester Stallone, short as fuck. Yeah. He's definitely standing on a fucking milk crate to make out with fucking... Yeah, what's the chick from Rocky Four? Tall, s- tall girl. S- a Russian. S- <laughs> <laughs> I forget her name. Was she married to Flavor Flav? That one. Yeah, I forget her name. How uh, how tall is uh, Sly? Five, uh, five, seven. My my size, a fucking producer, short fuck. Ah, <laughs> oh, dude. Oh, well, I know it's right. I'm failing. Oh, that Sylvester, up. Sylvester Stallone's height. If we say that five times fast. No, you do it. I bet you can't. I bet you to try to spell Sylvester. That's even harder. I'm gonna guess five. S Y L. Five seven. Because I'm 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 pretty short. He's 5'10", <laughs> and I called him short. That's, okay, okay. That's not short the as reason fuck. Why people say he, the reason why people say he's short as fuck is because all the boxing movies I guess he did, they're all huge. So that's why he looks short. Yeah. Oh. I don't know. 5'10", I also don't know how right the internet is. but I, I, I saw him at Coachella. He's not 5'10". He's shorter? He, he looks shorter than 5'10". Yeah. yeah. I saw him at Coachella. I saw him at Coachella. <laughs> I've, I've seen him live. That's Coachella. Hell yeah. Coachella cool, dude. <laughs> 
uh, yeah, it's, uh, that's in Indio, and from yeah. here, that's about hour and fifteen uh, north. So it's pretty really close by. Ten, ten east. Yeah. Wait, it's how much farther past is it from Temecula where we live? Indio, the the polo fields where they do Coachella. Yeah. That's just ten east, like heading towards Palm Springs. Oh. Yeah. Basically, I don't think I'll ever go to Coachella. It has to be at least ten bands I want to see for me to go. I went once. Um, you can't just see- the battle of the battle Same. of Coachella. Friday was Chili Peppers, which is the shit. That's cool. Yeah, that's- Saturday was Freezing Against the Machine. See, that's cool. Oh, that's, uh, that's, uh, that's, that's, yeah. that's cool, but I want more. Give me yeah. more. If you want me to go out to that fucking shitty hot hellhole where fucking people are all fucking taking Molly, over- and yeah, overdosing in the freaking grass. People are dirty and fucking. Ugh. I got one. I went to Coachella for the Big Four. Nice. Wait, Wait you, they, was what, it, was, it wasn't Coachella. It was, no, just, no. it was just the same fairgrounds. Yeah, same fairgrounds. Fair 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 yeah, that's, yeah, that's that's the name of the actual venue. Indio Fairgrounds. Or? Yeah, uh, I think it's actually. I think the. I mean, uh, someone correct me if I'm wrong. I think the venue is actually called. Coachella is that is that right? No, it's not. Coachella's the oh, event. It's, yeah, I'm wrong. It's, the, it's, it's the Empire Polo Grounds. Coachella, 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 Coachella yeah. is basically like Woodstock. Because the, the week like, after the week after Coachella, they have a or like, like or, uh, Don't listen to me. Rest. I'm an idiot. <laughs> one of my co- one of my coworkers, he does Coachella. And I went to Coachella. He and I stays saw, there uh, for a month. I saw the guys on Slayer for the first uh, time. I was looking at you like they played Coachella. I got hit in the face with a water bottle. It was sick. Oh man, Damn. was a fool. Yeah. It was like a, it's like, it made me feel like I'm at a concert. Like, like right before they're about to play, like a full, someone threw a full water bottle, which is a, just a waste of fucking water, and hit me. And like, they they were somewhere way back there. They just probably chugged it and then hit me square in the fucking Mary. face. I would love to be hit with a water bottle at a show right now. I've got hit in the face at you. Yeah, that would be show. cool, yeah. At a show, uh, I, I pretty much fucking shit my pants to be at a show right now. I don't even right? care. Yeah. I'll see anyone. I'll see fucking Hootie and the Blowfish right now. I'll see fucking anyone. Hanson and Nickelback back to back. <laughs> I'll see anyone right now. I don't even care. Dude, those shirts are fucking sick. It's Mark, sick I want one, on. man. Dude, but Garza, he does other shit than see that like kind of dot tie dye print. Yeah, he does a lot of other sh- prints that, like spider web outside blown out. I'll have to show you his Instagram. It's really he cool. had a death. It was orange font death, and it was long sleeve. And how he's saying he like spider webbed up on the long sleeve. I was like, that's sick. He like drizzles. Like, it's like none of it looks cheesy at all. Not at all. It's hard as fuck. So he did like dude. a mortician shirt that looks so sick. Wow. I know. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy how the. Uh, I mean, I have a, a purple tie dye shirt on on the way, but those those, those dye shirts are fucking. They they look so cool. Did did uh, Mark already have that printed, or did or do you do the Die first, and then you print on top of that. I think you do. The, I, I think no you do the you do the die after the shirt's printed. Oh, okay. like you could give him any shirt. You give him that shirt, and he'll fucking. Oh, so that, that was so already he black. Could, wait oh. a minute. So he could save the hate breed font and then tie dye the shirt in the background. Pretty positive. He, yeah, because he does old. He does vintage that's, shirts. So it's a gla- it's a glare. Oh. Shirts that are like, shirts that are like gray and old looking. That's fucking sick. Make them look like, yes, that's hard as fuck. He dude. sells them. And they're sick. Fuck yeah. But he like he knows all about metal too because he has like sick ass type of. I could take an old school Team Quest fight shirt. Sure. So I can. And the cool oh, thing about yeah. getting shirts like that is not only are like it's only one. Yeah, you one of a kind them. Like that's the, that one next to the one other Mark has one of a kind. Each of them yeah. are one of a kind. They're, so they're all different. You guys open up a can of worms that like now I want all my shirts dyed. Yeah, nice. and all, all, all my corn shirts and like fucking slip mod shirts. And yeah, hatred. you're gonna just be just tie dye guy. Yeah, I'm, gonna be, I'm gonna be a tie dye guy. Nice. Yeah, you know, wow. the good thing That's about so you, cool, though. I give you some props right now. When you when you're like onto or something, like you're all about it. Like when you came to Muay Thai back in the day, Coach yeah. Daniel Vodan, that guy's a sick bastard. Not sick bastard. I mean, he's like slick, <laughs> slick as fuck. And I got this guy to come in. No one ever comes in. Oh, I've kicked so many asses. Well, that's cool, you know. Like, just come train. You're not gonna fight in the cage against Dan Henderson. You're gonna go in there. You're just gonna learn how to fucking scrap. Yeah, that's. Well, I, think that, I think that's why a lot of people are afraid to go into the gym. They think you're gonna jump in the cage and it's like, fucking oh, terrifying. These guys, man. These guys are life. just gonna kick my ass and everyone's an asshole. Blah, blah blah. It's like they watch too many movies for sure. <laughs> also, too, they have karma yeah. on their neck because they know they're a bully mentality. They're thinking, "Fuck, it's time to pay the piper." Yeah. Yeah, if, yeah. If, if I go in there, I'm, they're not gonna spar with me. Yeah, of course not. So you're gonna be lucky if he even like sees you in his gym. You know, it's yeah. Like, but he's a cool motherfucker. You know, he's cool as shit. But. Yeah. Last thing he he's worried about is a kid going in there signing the waiver and doing like a one time fucking training session. Yeah. But the cool thing about this guy was, God rest, uh, you know, Mitch, rest in peace, rest in power. It was not long after Mitch passed away, he texted me, "Hey, dude, I got to talk to you about something important." I was all like, nerd ball. I'm like, oh fuck, what's wrong, man? What's going on? What's going on in life? He's like, I think I'm gonna hit you up on your offer and come train. I was like, after fuck. years, after years, years. Of me trying to like, yo, come train, dude. 
Yeah, cars are, I remember cars. Same are, thing with you. I'll look, come do open. I oh, I'm, open dude, I'm the, I'm the biggest fucking. I'll have drinks with you and be like, yeah, dude, fuck it. We'll fucking, <laughs> we'll fucking start fucking tomorrow, dude. Tomorrow morning, dude. Like, tomorrow morning, <laughs> 7 a.m. sharp. And I fucking wake up two days later and be like, <laughs> What the hell are you talking about, Nick? Yeah, I never talked to you about I fighting. I never <laughs> once mentioned going to the gym. What yeah, the just because I watch fighting doesn't mean I want to fight. Hey, you don't have to. You don't have to fight. Just go I, in there and learn some ninja yeah, shit. Yeah, I don't even like to walk fast, dude. <laughs> dude fuck that. You know, break a sweat. Fuck that. Unless all on stage. Yeah, dude. Ain't, ain't the only time I'm sweating is fucking on stage. At a boy. Or Jack Hammer. Jack Hammer. There you go. Jack Hammer. <laughs> Whoops. Anyways, <laughs> moving on. <laughs> oh, that, that kind of jackhammer. Wait, what, what? What? What is We're talking that? about the actual power tool. You see when people yeah. are out. building shit. Or breaking shit, actually. Not building anything. They're yeah. breaking the sidewalk. Never yeah. mind. Yeah, it's like a foundation. You know, like, we're really, like, bust out the concrete in the backyard and lay turf or anything. You gotta go in there yeah. jackhammer and oh, break it all up and remove the fucking us. earth and the concrete. See, that yeah. sounds awful. But I, I want to like everyone. I want to do a jackhammer for real for like ten seconds. It blows out your like, forearms. Fuck you up. And then I'd blows be like, out your and then I'd be like, all right, I'm cool. I'm done. Um, I don't know if you guys ever rode motorcycles, but when you're hauling ass over, like they call it a whoop section. Yeah, it's basically like the the horse and your little kid, but like fast as fuck, heavy, and your forearm is <sighs> it's called arm bump. I love these fucking drinks, man. So <laughs> I love them, man. So what? What are these drinks? Just made me feel all giddy. They're all refreshing. One right? of them. Yeah, wow. they're fucking sick. Yeah, this is number two for me. It's I'm pretty good, right? I'm driving, so appreciate it. Yeah. Oh. So have you guys ever been in a, into a fight at a show? Like you just went for the show and a fight busted up? Oh, my God. Who is this oh. for, Nick? Chris. Uh, thank you. I appreciate that. <gasps> Nick, we are in a heavy metal band. We've seen hundreds of fights. Dude, shows, <laughs> dude, it, was, it was a thing. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm very... I'm very blessed and lucky that I got. I live right down the street from the Showcase Theater, mm-hmm. right over here. It's legendary venue. Oh. Uh, Animosity yeah. played there. Um, a lot of bands, big, small. I mean, uh, so uh, like clearly we would play there, and like you had to like stop the show, and then they turn the fucking house lights on white, and it's like it's break up with this fucking fight. It's crazy. And then uh, there's this. I forgot. I th- I forgot what show it was. Um, I was standing on the steps. I think it was like part of her Karana was uh, was playing old school fucking uh, hard, 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 uh, yeah old school hardcore. And then uh, you know when like something happens and it just stays with you forever. It's so yeah. vivid. So I was thinking about that the other day. Yeah, it's sure. it's so weird. Like I remember like, that was by far the most vivid fight I ever seen. There where it's like oh, it shit. broke out and it was like okay, this is violent. Yeah, like, this isn't like a fight. Oh, you, you break it up. It's all cool. They were they kept going at it. And I was like, and I was on the steps, so the steps are basically connected to the stage. Yeah, and then just looking down, I'm like, Dude, yeah, the bird's eye view. Best, this best, is best like seat, all right. Seat in the house. This goes beyond the crew shit. This is like people were they, they were fucking fighting. So it's yeah. the Royal Rumble, like multiple people or one on one? Yeah, fucking Royal, going down? Royal Rumbles, pretty dude. much. And plus, like to, to even add to that is that uh, the whole thing back then was uh, a majority of people there. Including myself, but the whole like straight edge hardcore scene. So it's not drunk fighting. These yeah. motherfuckers are pissed. So all sober as fuck. Angst. <laughs> angst oh, yeah. and fucking fighting, dude. Yeah. The sober the sober shit is definitely uh <laughs> it's not it's not sloppy. It's like yeah. seeing it's like seeing <laughs> yeah. it's like, that's, that's real that's real animosity. No, it's, it's like sloppy. seeing two people fighting on a video game, but their power is all the way up. Yeah. It's not like halfway. There's <laughs> There's no uh, like Aussie man reviews fights for, for sloppy fighting in the street after a pub. Yeah, dude, the showcase is where I saw pff, so many fights. That was a violent venue. Yeah. Like, how many shows that have you been to there? Actually, me. I mean, yeah. I've I've probably played about five there, and but I've been to nice. like I've been to shows there too. Like really? yeah, like I swear, like sometimes animosity we would play there, and like we'd stay there for an extra day. Cheers, my brothers. Be there. Right. We'd be there. Cheers, Nick. Or be there. Love you, DK. Love you too. Salute. Be there the, Salute. Be there the um, Trace, babe. We'd be there the night before sometimes, and there was a show the night before. So oh, we'd, wow. get to, we'd get to just go and watch. So like, sick. I remember seeing, like, I want to say Sworn Enemy and Case of Strain played there together. Or something nice. something crazy. And, like, that was a very brutal show. Lorenzo <laughs> was fucking throwing down in the hallway all Yeah, we brutal. partied with him in Vegas for the UFC. Lorenzo. Lorenzo was cool guy. throwing down in the hallway, and that dude... I don't know if he likes to fight, 
but he's down to fight. So does he know how to fight? Does he's he fu- he's, he's fucking he, him up. He's from fucking much. New York, dude. He's ready to go. He's, nice. <laughs> he's ready to go. He's shout just, out, sh- sh- shout out, man. Sh- we fucking love him so. That much, guy was dude. cool as fuck. I remember uh, Tom, Ashley, and Jesse were fighting in UFC. We were at T-Mobile Arena, and he, we were chilling with him. Yeah, he sounds like a um, Matt Sir. Like he's a like East Coast. Oh yeah, he's cool as fuck. And I was like, hey, yo, buy your beer. He's all on drink, man. I'm like, oh. Oh, yeah, he quit drinking a while back. Yeah, now I really wouldn't want to fight him. Wouldn't want yeah. to fight him ever, but now no. especially he'd be more scary. <laughs> there, was, nice. there was this fucking one time we, uh, it was our first time ever on a, on a, like a tour bus, and we were sharing with, I don't know who, by idea this was, we were sharing the bus with Sworn Enemy. and uh, You guys didn't know them. No. Not I me. knew them before, before you guys did that tour, but then when I found out you guys were sharing a bus... Go on. Yeah. Go on. Yeah. Anyways, uh, they, Alex, fighting on the bus. <laughs> Alex and me turned 21 on that tour. We both became complete alcoholics to every level. We started drinking for the first time in our lives on that tour. Got drunk as fuck. They, they taught us how to tour. Yeah. And uh, they, uh, rest in peace, Paulie, they're, they're our drummer. Great guy, the man. Best. He, uh, I went to my bunk scared because him and Paulie started fist fighting. Lorenzo and Paulie. On, I, I, on the front lounge, dude. They were fist fighting on the bus. We're, we're driving. We're in the middle, in the, yeah, in the middle of nowhere. Fuck, they, they, be they, don't, they don't give a fuck, dude. <laughs> and I, I, have a, I have a vivid... The war beast, Vegas. Yeah, I, they, we got to that one next. See, the sworn enemy, they've already, they've already done Ozfest. They've, right? They've... Uh, yeah, they've already done it, man. They, they've, done, they've done festivals in Europe and everything. They're they're ready to go. They're prime. They're doing this club tour. They, they're they fucking... They're, they're little hardcore rock stars, dude. Yeah, man. It was... Remember, I fucking scared, fucking peeked out. <laughs> and, 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 and Lorenzo tells, Lorenzo tells Polly, you're going to hit me when I'm down, motherfucker. And then it came like, and then like another fucking scuffle. I'm like, oh my God. What the fuck is going oh, on, man. dude? Good thing to be a fly in the wall and fucking watching that. Dude. I wish you were a fly on the wall with me and Mitch pretty much almost got in a fight when we threw the vacuum cleaner at each other. <laughs> you threw a vacuum cleaner at you. Back and forth? Yeah. <laughs> what, motherfucker? Hold the... Oh, man. So, so where did the vacuum cleaner come from? On a bus. Wait, was no, it a little think... handy one or a full fucking no, it vacuum? No, a full-on vacuum. It was, it was a, a vacuum. <laughs> a full... He I found a vacuum and threw Mitch... it at Dan Kenny. Yeah, and I threw it... <laughs> That's like some Hulk <laughs> shit, dude. Threw it back at him. <laughs> That's like, like throw it on the couch. I was all... <laughs> I, I was all mad. Dude, he got all mad, and then I was confused, and then I got all mad, and then... Man, I'm so glad we didn't like fight each other for real, for real, for real. Yeah, I was suck, man. <laughs> fighting your fighting your bro sucks, man. DK, you get this look on your face when there's like 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 a conversation. You get like this. I'm pissed. I'm not. It's, it's I'm I'm just pissed. You're just like, <laughs> <laughs> you're just like you're just but you're, you're pissed but chill at the same time. Yeah. You're so pissed but you're so chill. Like that that impossible tightrope balance. Man, you 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 fucking get there. I love it. I hate getting pissed. I miss it's it. Such a waste of energy. Yeah, it is. <laughs> that's, true. that's why. I, that's why. I swear to God. That's why I figured out what to drink and how to drink it. I drink straight tequila now. I don't know how that, I feel about that. That okay. makes me happy. <laughs> yeah. And then <laughs> seltzers, cool. Yeah. You give me some whiskey, you give me some Budweiser's. I turn into a puncher bag. <laughs> I, I turn into a puncher bag. Start, start He's calling, like, why is this puncher bag talking? I'm going to start <laughs> calling you all the bad words and saying shit about everything. Yeah, it's not a good I drink whiskey. So you turn into Kershaw with whiskey, you're saying? Turn into Cl- Clayton Kershaw, and I'll throw things at you as fast as I can. Nice. Nice, <laughs> nice. Dude, that was, that was a sick fight, huh? What? Which one? Uh, the the one we just saw two years ago. Yeah, oh, dude, that whole card was <laughs> sick as fuck, dude. UFC, card UFC 259. Yes, yes. DK, thank you for the, for the clarification of that, yeah, that it number. Yeah, was great. Three title fights. Amazing. Three title fights on one card. There, sometimes they they put together cards that are just like, how do you do such a fucking stacked card? Yeah. They are professionals at that, dude. <sighs> they are. They did the three, the three title fights, though, that, I mean, they could do those three fights no problem. Like, but if it was another fighter that had the belt, like or something, like Connor, he, if he, like let's say Connor's the champion, there doesn't need to be another belt. There doesn't in need to be another belt in line. Yeah, but yeah. this one, it's like, okay, now you're gonna put three. That means I have to bite. Of course, you know. Yeah, you have to. And then they could check out the prize. From yeah, 60 to 70. it's like it's yeah. like it's like uh, it's <laughs> yeah, like let me pay it. Like Disneyland. <laughs> <laughs> Disneyland's opening up, huh? Yeah, uh, that's the rumor. A music, fe- uh, not music, uh, food festival coming up. Kind of like how Knotts has the Boysenberry Fest. Disney's doing the same thing. Can't go on the rides, but he go around the whole park and eat and shit. <laughs> that's uh, lame. I'm, exactly. I'll fucking do it. I personally enjoy 
It's been... You can go to the fucking place, but you can't ride any of the rides. Yeah. That's like going to a concert, but you can't hear any of the music. Can't hear the music. You yeah. can chill at the venue. You have to wear headphones that are mute, mute out you, but you're like looking at the band like, I think they're rocking. There's, I've seen something where like it's like a mute party where people have monitors on and there's yeah, no music it. and they're like, like you know, Silent interpreting disco. that shit. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. I want to know like the lady who does the hand, sign language for Lamb of God and shit like that, the, what he's saying. Like what deaf people are even going to concerts anyways? And how many are there? They have to fill the resonance from the... Uh, they, they do. They can fill that. They do, I'm sure. Yeah, they probably have like heightened senses, you know? Well, yeah. I, I would imagine. Well, do you remember feeling... when we were in Big Big Bear and what, Derek? Derek, yeah. Came out and he was just like, do you mind if I... He would write on his phone for me to... It's because he couldn't speak to me, but he'd say, do you mind if I lean on your base cabinet while I watch, your, watch Alex? Yeah, he wants to fill it. I'm like, yeah. So he leaned on my base cabinet. We just started playing yellow or something, whatever. Yeah. And he's like, just like, he could feel my bass that's on his back and watch Alex play. He's just yeah. like, I was Fuck like, yeah. damn, that feels good. That's right? cool, man. I, I was like, that's a, one really cool memory I have from music, for sure. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. That's beautiful, actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that whole month was a blur. We made it blurry. Yeah, there's a we 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 made, made a collection of handles of uh, bottles of Smirnoff. Yeah, that was my that was Smirnoff. Like, how many can we get? Smirnoff days. We have. I don't. If you wanted, to, if people like you know, a lot of people brag about how much they drink. You know, mm -hmm. if you wanted to go there, if you want to brag about your shit, we could beat you because we yeah. we yeah. we were like I don't even dude. We went up there. No, sure we went up there. We went up to write. We went up there and write an album. We wrote like three rap songs, <laughs> and then we we wrote like a few, we wrote a few like sick riffs. A few sick riffs, and that's it. Yeah, I thought me and Nicole <laughs> went hard. Clearly, no <laughs> dick. Kenny oh. goes fucking harder. <laughs> Dude, we were we were just getting bored of drinking vodka, so we would come up with new ways to drink it. We like mix it with peppercini juice. <sighs> we would take a shot with like Tabasco in it, Dude, and then we take a shot. We, we we started making double shots with fucking emergency powder in it. <laughs> we just, Why is this healthy? We were like, hey, this, this is healthy, is, dude. That's what I was drinking in Vegas, dude. I brought like, my ninja try, blender. Try snorting in emergency. See what happens. If, you might grow extra veins coming out of your arms, and well, you, you, you won't get, get sick for a year. I oh, forget. Yeah. I forget what tour you guys just got off, but I talked to him and I'm like, dude, you got to Well, you know Tom. You know Ashley. You know, JT was there before he was there. Yeah. But I was like, you know Team Quest, dude. You like, roll out. You got to roll and be there for Vegas. All you got to do is go with us. Talk them into it. I had my Ninja Blender, <sighs> spinach, kale, cucumber, celery, my vegan pre-workout. This guy, man. This guy. But instead of water, tea was vodka. And I was in the gym every morning at 6 a.m., pounding that, getting fucked up, working out. You're drinking it in the gym. I never seen no, it in, in my life, dude, or even heard of it. This guy was getting up. We're all hungover. We're in fucking Vegas. Yeah. And this guy gets up. On time, like, dude, you want to get up? It's time, time to go to the gym. This guy's <laughs> fucking putting pre-workout and water. Vegan pre-workout. There's and no artificial water, shit. Uh, water, all all plant-based. Water, water pre-workout and vodka. Tito's. And going to the gym. I'm like, what are you doing, dude? It's 6 a.m. I was sweating out you the night before You just went to bed three hours ago. Actually, like, I was going to bed doing? early from getting shot, dude. Oh, okay. Like, I didn't say I don't gamble, so I was going to bed early, and I was like, boom, like, you know. Hey, yeah, hey, okay. fucking chant. Yeah. <laughs> That's the difference between me and you. I go and lose all my money and go to bed at 4 a.m. <laughs> or yeah. don't go to bed. No, the, a funny story. You guys are talking about, uh, what's his name? Um, Lorenzo fighting on the fucking bus. Yeah. My buddy Jeff, he went to the Wayne's at the Monte Carlo, and then Keith, Keith Berry, fucked up his ankle, and he was staying in the room. So me and Garza come back to the hotel room, and his buddy from Vegas is there. And I guess that guy was a mutual friend of Keith and Jeff. But when Jeff comes back to the room, Jeff pushes me out of the way, walks right to him, gets him in a tie clinch, and just fucking folds this guy in half. <laughs> I heard the life go out of this guy. This guy literally bowed, dropped on the floor in the, in the hotel room. And the Jeff, war beast is the tall war guy. Beast is fucking ground pounding him. The war beast. He, he what did he say? That. I heard you. Ca heard you called me a Jew. No, something. and then Keith grabs <laughs> K word. Yeah, uh, K Y K E. Yeah, K word. Bad word. I don't know, but not K I K. -K Jew is not even a bad word. So no, but uh, he said kike. Oh, okay. Yeah. And I and right away I was like Jeff, what are you doing? And he's like, see, I didn't even know Jeff is that Jewish. He's, Jew he's Jewish. Definitely enough to make him mad. Yeah. So. Dude, he was so hardcore, and like just seeing like this, we're you were you were in the room too. I was chilling in the room like I'm we're hanging just out. all hanging out. And Jeff just comes in from stomping this guy. Keith, we're like, what the fuck? Hanging out with Keith and hanging out with this guy just 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 met fucking five minutes ago, and then the war <laughs> beast I've known for a long time. This fucking runs in. Doesn't say a damn word. Gives him a fucking knee. So I pound him. 
And I was like, See, those it was the, pretty impressive. Yeah, you, it was. You, you it was, it was that, very you, impressive. Yeah, it was you, good form actually. I was like, nice form, you put Jeff. that. You put that moment with me and Mitch, and the Lorenzo and Polly, all those little moments of your life. I'd love to have a compilation. We could just watch it right now. That'd be a highlight videos. Yeah. We could just laugh our ass off. <laughs> yeah. I mean, no one got seriously injured in any of the stories we're no. talking about. Yeah, but, no. So that makes the it guy, better. The guy's yeah. his his, uh, his pride got hurt. Oh, his pride. What she needed. You get the wind knocked out of you, pride out of you. I heard it. <laughs> it was like taking a fastball right to, right below the freaking sternum of the solar plexus. Yeah, no thanks, dude. Um, yeah. yeah. So initially, so note, I was, note it, don't ever use that word, guys. Well, initially, I was yeah. like, Jeff, what are you doing? This is your buddy. And when Jeff turned around and told me that, I, inside, part of me was like, yo, lock the door to stomp this motherfucker. Because I'm like racist and all that like, bullying shit. I hate that shit. But I was like, we we're grown as adults. And I was playing, you know, referee. Like, all right, dude. He said he's sorry. Let him just like whatever, just get out of the room. So the guy dipped out. But on the way out, the guy was like, "I'll see you around." And I was like, "Okay, bring him back in here. Let's, let's fucking take care of him." I did. I, everyone who listens to this too definitely has stories from their life like this, and they'll understand. Yeah. They'll yeah. understand, yeah. dude. Just the just the awkwardness. The when your adrenaline goes up from seeing it, you're just going, "Holy shit, this is weird." I love that feeling, but yeah, dude, <laughs> you can't it, get that feeling anywhere else. It's, it's real raw and uncut. Yeah, it's raw and uncut. Real fucking dude. deal. That's why, like, in, immediately he was like, "What the fuck?" And right away, Keith grabbed him around the waist and pulled him back. And I was like, "Jeff, what are you doing? This is your buddy." And he, when he said that, I was like, "All right, let's get him." Did but you think they were him. pretending at first? No, that knee that was hundred percent the real fucking deal. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't need him. He like I saw the guy's life bar go down, and, like his soul pop out the window. He need him so hard. Like the Charlie Murphy front kick, the fucking knees are fucking wreck this dude oh. also, that's a beautiful knee because the guy was expecting to shake hands and just, boom right here, a fucking bull hit him right in the stern <laughs> Jeff's a big dude and the guy's the guy is big guy yeah Jeff's a big dude and the guy wasn't I don't uh, want a knee from him I'll tell you that yeah. I don't want a knee from anybody well if you yeah, guys came in, if you guys came in the train like, you guys would see it a mile away I'm like alright you just ole it you know, oh. it. <laughs> you could just see, if someone's walking at you that way <laughs> you, you know <laughs> you know that's real yeah and they, and the guy should have known, but he, the guy wasn't the wrong. He was trying to have the olive leaf. Oh, the belt and the war beast was like, "Fuck that!" Oh, you can't can the belt go down. You know what? You know what Jeff did? He lived a fantasy. That I think a lot of people would love to experience. And uh, he ran into someone that was talking shit online, yep. and he got to fucking smack him. Yeah. Oh, that's what it was. That's exactly it, it, in, in yeah. A he knew apparent. who he was. Did they ever meet before? Mm-hmm. Okay. No, no. They, 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 they were they were old buddies. Dude, every but, time I go to talk shit online, like I know I'm about to say they something, win every I type time. it out and I go, Delete "What am it. I doing?" Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, For sure. I'm an idiot. I can't say like, "Hey man, this fucking shit sucks." Or whatever. No, because I take it to heart. You're like, when I was a little kid, my sister was babysitting this guy, and he was like, "Your mama," and I was like, "I love my <laughs> mom." And yeah. I, boom, hit him, and he fell, and his he landed on the pedal of his uh, bicycle. Oh, and hit him right in the spine. He's like, he's crying. My sister runs outside, and she's like, "What are you doing? I'm babysitting him." He said. F mom, she was like, yeah, but you know, you gotta like let shit like that slide. I'm like, no, you don't. Yeah, <laughs> Nick, huh? you, you could be a 50 year old man. You're a 15 year old man. They still talk about your mama? No way. Slap him, dude. That, uh, it came up quick. That shit will never go away. Yeah, you're like, your mom, I'm like, what? Yeah, that's an ultimate jam. I mean, now there's all, you know, there's repercussions for your actions. So, like, now it's sure. like, okay, because I had to defend myself once, you know, not in competition, because, like, you know, I did it for physical therapy. You know, I still do it just to stay young and stay healthy. But um, yeah, I asked my friends, a lot of cops train, a lot of uh, officers, SWAT, everything, ICE, everything. And um, I was like, at what point can someone that trains defend themselves? They're like, you need to, someone needs to like assault you. So you have to defend yourself. But once you defend yourself and you stop the, the initial assault after that, then that's you getting in trouble because you know what you're doing. Sure. But if like, so let's say like the dude on Friday night, he swung at me and I just slipped it and I just hit him one behind the ear. And yeah. he felt that and he was like, oh, I never felt that before. And he was like, okay, I'm cool, I'm cool. Yeah, yeah. I could walk, he it's, could. It's he, a humbling thing. The, co- the cops can see that and be like, oh, you know, this guy defended himself. I didn't yeah. follow up and there's no aggravated assault. If I were like the other guy where they had to put plates on his face back in the day, remember that shit? Yeah. For Vega Cello when you came down yeah. to my brother's house? Yeah. Plates on his face? Yeah. Like dinner plates, uh, screws and I don't know. I hit, like all this crushed it on his face because his head was against the ground. And I hit him. Oh, I hit him. He swung. I slipped it. I hit him once. He was out, and I should have stopped there. That was self defense. When I talked to my cop friends, they were saying, "Okay, so his feet were in the air. So when he hit the ground, he woke back up with his feet in the air, and I pushed his feet." That, up. that is called that is called overkill. Yeah, but when you're in the moment and you're a tone repeatedly, I don't want to fight. Yeah, you we were just broing down, and now you're you know, wanting to fight. So it's, you know, now, you know, I'm a little older. You know, it's, it's weird as fuck. I love cage fighting, MMA, 
uh, so much, but I don't really like real fighting in the streets or anything. Yeah, I hate it, dude. <laughs> yeah, I like the sport of it. I don't like the violence of it. I guess I do like the violence of it because I'm trying I'm trying to see knockouts here in competition dude. for sport. I'm, yeah, in the, the, real life, it's like and these guys are getting money. Yeah. They're not doing it for free on the streets. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I'm like, hey, they're supporting their family because they're good and they're tough people. Of course. Yeah. When they fight in the streets, it's out of anger, out of pride, and out of freaking ego. Yep. Sure. So it's it's nice seeing them get humbled, but yeah, I don't like street fights at all. Dude. <laughs> no, dude. So it's crazy how how uh, how drawn we are to like as DK just said, like we're so drawn to watching like the UFC. We secretly want to see a knockout. Of course. Oh yeah. There's just something about it that gets you fucking pumped, which is why I'm so you know like. Uh, it's because we're cavemen at heart, dude. It's like going to hockey games. You love 100. But I mean, like, I, I, I bet, when the, du- I bet when the you, dugout's empty, you're like, everyone stands up. They I bet you to. anything. If we were our age or younger or whatever, back in the day when they had the lions fighting people and shit, in the Coliseum, yeah, we'd watch for sure. Yeah, yeah. Now if you yeah. tell me that's gonna happen. I'm gonna stay home. I don't want to see that. You don't want to see that. Don't want to see that. That's that's way too brutal for me. But back then. Yeah. Uh, Life was just more brutal. Well, there's mat- matadors yeah. that uh, the bullfighters. See, I think that's that when the, the, bull, shit in when, the, the world. when the bulls win, though, it's like that's what you get. You yeah. roll the dice with the freaking mother nature. The bulls got fucking horns, and he's pissed off. Yeah, dude. people die like every other year from that shit. Yeah, getting the horn in the stomach or the oh, horn in the dude. mouth, or mm-hmm. that's a dumb thing. In sports to me. I don't even know do you, how much do you like, get paid. You think there's documentaries on it? Oh, not enough. Not dude, enough. Hey, you want to have this bull run at you full speed? That, no thanks, dude. Well, it's like in Pamplona, Spain, dude. They're, they're all running from the bull, and there's a lady out there saying, the bull's our friend, and the bull fucking just wrecks her, and she goes ragdolling, like, three cartwheels in the air, and it's fucking her up in the corner, and the people that are, you know, they're wearing the white gowns with the red thing, they're trying to show the red and the bull to get him off her. Because <laughs> the bull's going to wow. be a fucking bull, no matter I like, what. I like that fucking, like, meme, a vegan meme, where it's like, uh, cows are our friends. And then the guy goes, Yeah? What, tell me that cow's name. <laughs> tell me where he's. Tell me where he's from. How much? How good of friends are you? <laughs> Do you know his mom? What the fuck? Oh. I mean, he, it's true. That lady who said cows are friendly got stapled by the bulls. I bet she's kind of changed. I bet she's not holding those signs anymore. Not during oh. burning of the bull. That's for I damn sure. She's not going back to that thing either. She's having nightmares about it, dude. That thing is. I would. Be look out a window and watch that, I guess, and just be like, yeah. these people are crazy. Now, that's something I would never do ever. It's on people's, some people's bucket list, I'm sure. No. Not mine. Not mine. <laughs> yeah, bulls, it's bulls not. hurt. It's like, it's like ghost riding a motorcycle into somebody with fucking spiky things at the end of it. Fuck that. What the oh. hell? <laughs> that's what a fucking bull is, dude. Kinda, oh, yeah. Kinda, that's kinda, what, that's kind of what it is. Yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. Get, I get your analogy now. I thought you were talking about a real thing. No. Like some the, people just get a motorcycle. The, the just... weight of ghost riding a motorcycle into somebody and just taking them out, that's a bull running at you, but it knows where you're going. It's aiming at you. Sure. Fuck that. Nick, you have the best analogies, dude. They're they're great. Yeah, he's, are they on point? Yeah. Have, All right, I'm, cool. Yeah, that's pretty. You have pretty the sick. best, and our drummer Alex has the weirdest. Yeah, weirdest, but sometimes they fucking hit. You're like, yes, that's yeah. a good one. You understand? You're like, fuck yeah, yeah, dude. Shout Alex. out Alex. Fuck. Yeah. I think that's the only way Alex can understand something sometimes. Where he in analogies? He, he yeah, he makes up his own analogy and then he understands it. And if I don't understand it, he'll say an analogy. I'll be like, "Oh, okay." Well, that's yeah, because right. you say it critical uh, thinking, people are like, "What?" Like they can't, they can't relate to it. But you say it as an analogy, you speak it, and then they're like, "Oh, yeah, I can relate to that." Yeah. You know, and it's, if it's funny, it's even better. Fucking perfect timing. Big analogy yeah. fan over here. Yeah, dude. Big analogy fan. Yeah, that's like that's the fucking golden combination. If it's like the way, if you can make someone else understand it, but yeah. it's also funny. Yeah. Comedy is the best way to get through a person. Oh, of course. for sure. That's the, that's the best way. Yeah, you go through the funny bone. Yeah, because who doesn't like to laugh? Of course. Yeah, you use, you, you open someone's soul when you make someone laugh, man. That's sure. fucking cool. Man, these seltzers are getting me going, dude. They're good, dude. They're like great. Them. I swear. Good, good call instead of the hazy IPAs. Great call. Yeah, I, it, it's way better. You know, I'm all heavy and like tired. Oh, right. so I'm fat. Zero like sugar, that. dude. Yeah. Zero sugar. I. Sh- I'm hammered, dude. <laughs> 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 I had one and a half seltzers, dude. Right. I don't think I could drive home. I'm going to have to walk up, Nick. No, we'll smash some pizza <laughs> so we're up, dude. Dude, what do you guys what what do what do you guys think what's next for, for Izzy? As oh, a party just, go, just go back down and, and run, own your division. He stays the ultimate. Yeah. Just, just champ. Run your yeah. division, dude. He tried to he tried to double. Yeah, he double was, category he, was and tie, he was talking about going up to two oh five, getting no. that belt, and then fighting John Jones, a heavyweight. Fuck no. No, it's, it's go back power, down dude. to one eighty five and just own that shit. Yeah. And be oh, yeah, trying to be the best light, light heavyweight. Try to be the one best one eighty five. No, no. Be better than so. Anderson Silva, you know? Yeah, yeah. Just keep crushing good ass people. And right. you'll you'll be considered the best. Yeah. I mean he stepped up to the plate. That's respect for that rest for damage, but like, that's a different freaking size beast I that like he's trying how, to wrestle. I like how Joe Rogan was like, uh, yeah, and you used to fight at one eighty five, right? He goes, No. I've been two oh five my whole life. 
Jan? Yeah. Or Jan? Yeah. F- fucking. Yeah. That's a big dude. Yeah. When he weighed in, he, he flexed. I was like, fuck. Even him, even him like, malnourished and, like, if he had a cut weight, which everyone does. That fight was, was, was cool. It was fun. It was better than I thought it was going to be, actually. Really? I, I thought it was going to be either Izzy gets knocked out or it's just going to be a tag him up points. But it was, it was, uh, pretty interesting, man. That was a good fight. What about Nunez and, uh, Anderson? Dude, so good. Is that what you expected? Yeah, I didn't, I didn't think that quick, dude. I bet I, I, thought, I, I bet a little bit of money on Megan just because the odds. Of course. But then, I, then she, I, when you lose your bet like that, you're like, that's fine. That's fine. Take my money. Yeah. I'm an idiot. Like that. Of course. Well, because you know you're rolling the dice because like the odds are so heavily against her that if you win, that's awesome. But yeah, like, the but, uh, chances uh, of it happening are my very dumb slim. Ass, and... My dumb ass is like, oh, she just had a kid. She's gonna be at home a lot. Not. Oh, training. she birthed the tried, kid. No, she didn't birth the kid. Justify it. Oh, but she, her wife is busy. I try to d- justify my thinking, right? The and then I, I was like, <laughs> yeah, she, her wife had a kid. She's at home. She's not training as much. After the fight, she's like, you know how I'm the lion? Well, I just the lion. I have a cub now. I'm yeah. even more scarier now. I yeah. fucking kill you. Yeah, now you show like, oh, the claws. Oh, now she has to show the claws in the face. I was like, whoa. Yeah, she's right. Now that she has a kid, she's going to fight even more brutal. Even harder because she has to, now she's got a kid to take care uh, of. Right? Rather than just be There's champ. nobody to fight her at all. Dude, yeah. it was so cool to see. She is a a, a special woman, dude. Just a... Yep. Wow. Just seeing, seeing her... She finishes perform fights. Perform and too. execute she like that. 13 dude, out of 16 is, fights. That's insane. She finishes unbelievable. Like most women, a lot of people don't like watching women fight because they a lot of them go to deci- decision. Of course, Amanda just doesn't go to decision. No, she she doesn't give a fuck. She'll take them out, dude. That's yeah. another level. Either knock them out or choke them out. She's good, dude. Or she's, technically knock them out, which she's, is she's they want to be out of there also too. Because but like, also they're, they're gonna turn her she's, around. They're gonna turn her around quick too. She's gonna fight. They're gonna fight probably Juliana Pena really soon. Yeah. Oh yeah, I saw that. Yeah, because she didn't take no damage. I mean, she broke a sweat in that first round. And just boom, took, got her out of there. She was fine. I like seeing Megan go up to them and hug the baby. I, was all, I love that part. I was like, I was like, I thought she was hot. That made her even fucking hotter. I was like, fuck yeah, dude. <laughs> Atta boy. And if I saw, uh, is it true? I she saw... looks like a Valkyrie, dude. She looks like one of the Valkyries. I don't Who? know. I don't know what that is. Uh, <laughs> M- Megan Anderson. I saw Rose is going to fight someone next. She's fighting Wele. Yeah, really? For the championship, yeah. Dang. How's Ashley's neck healing? I remember you were talking to her during the fights about her, oh, her she... surgery. She's got more time, but she's... She's gonna get better. She looks good. Shout out to our friend ADS. Yep. Yeah, Ashley is awesome. She she looks healthy. She looks ready to go. It's cool. She's got more little more she got more months of going. She can't go to the gym for a while, but Yeah. Man, that's gotta be crazy. Surgery. But he, it's just like any other sport, dude. Like baseball players, they get taken out for like a season because they're yeah. shoulder. Yeah. And then they have to wait for the off season and then they can come back next season. That's crazy that the at least with fighting, there's no fucking seasons. You know, yeah. like you come back yeah. when you're ready. Like yeah. we don't, there's no like time off. That's the sickest thing about the sport. It's like oh, it's every weekend almost. Right? See, yeah, there's a uh, you Turn got and burn you got fighting, you got wrestling, you got music. There's really no season. You're just fucking all year, year yep. round, year round fucking grinding. Yep. How mo- sick was that though? Sorry to interrupt, but how sick was that during COVID when everything was like off, like everything just pff, locked down? The UFC was like, fuck that, we're putting some fights. Yeah, we're so gonna, cool. We're, I gonna, thought, we're gonna make a fucking island, <laughs> right? Yeah, so island. Sick. So sick, I, I you can't really. They helped they help me out big time to look forward to something. Of course, gave people very, hope, gra- very grateful for it that. It gave people hope, yeah. seeing people knock each other the fuck out or choke them out. So <laughs> basically, you, basically, you're telling fuck me out. I got to play board games all week, right, until Saturday, and they're fucking. And then I get to watch something. That's it, dude. Yeah, order a yeah. pizza, sign some beers. And, and then I, we got the whole NFL season. That was great. Nice. Weird, still weird to me that seeing football games or fighting with no crowd. Like, when the crowds come back, it's going to be... I'm turning that TV up, dude. Yeah. And I'm going to hear that crowd roar or hear them boo It's or like whatever. going to Monster Jam. They're, they're going to be doing the wave in the audience the whole time people are in the fucking cage. Oh, people are going to be so, so happy, stuck. dude. dude Dana White's already trying to get back in Texas. Yeah, okay, he's talking dude. about Texas, and man. And I'm like, it's still a little, Your too, stadium. Still a little too soon. Yeah, dude. Yeah. I, I think that's when, like... Obviously, like it takes that craziness to make that first leap to where he's successful. He's been successful the past year, but I yeah. think that that's when you cross the line. All right, you're gonna, I know you're going to try, but that's probably it is too soon. And put, I mean, you're, you're talking like a worldwide uh, and national uh, ability to, to get to, to prep and get all the vaccines out that's and, what I'm and, saying, and, and then see what it does. Yeah, I think it's you know, I think you should at least wait, wait a little longer. Person. Yeah, I mean, not yeah. when I say a little, I mean like six to eight months longer. Yeah. Yeah, he's thinking. He's he he. When he heard the Texas opened up, he was already on the phone. He's like, oh, he said, we're in there. Yeah. Yeah. I heard. I heard him talk at the post conference. 
Which yeah. I mean, I get I get it. Somebody's gotta be the first to do it. But he, he wants to be the first to do everything. He's a very driven man. Mm-hmm. The very first sport was combat. Yeah. yeah how, what do you guys think about um, the the fake crowd noises during like a game or? A... I only really hear it during baseball and shit comes. It's all over when it's, the yes. comedians do their monologue. Oh, they oh, do it. Like... I think they do it. In, I don't know if they do it in basketball. I don't even know if they did. They did it in football. I think. Really? Football? Yeah, they do. Yeah. They do in football? Is I mean, that for you, the players you, or for the audience? What, what? I don't understand it. It's for the audience, and I don't even know. If, I want to know if the. Players can hear it because it might make them feel more n- normal to play. I guess. But fighting, they don't. See, for in me, fighting, it works. They, it works fighting, they don't. In me, I want a dead shot. I want to hear my fucking corner. Everything they're yeah. saying because that's that's my third and nope. fourth pair of eyes outside you, of what I see. As a fighter, you get to your corner. I'm, but I'm, as a, as I, a, I like martial arts. I won't say as a, a as a fucking as a fan. But I fight. As a fan, <laughs> we get to hear the corner too. Of course. Well, pretty cool. Yeah, my damn, you I, you can hear his corner. Yeah. See, like at, so when weird. all this COVID stuff happened, like when you would see when you'd hear like a liver kick, like, like oh, yeah. deep in the body, like yep. you can't hear mm-hmm. that unless you're in the cage or you're the corner right there. Other than that, it gets drowned out with the freaking sound of the audience. Everyone, yep. it gets resonated with, it gets filtered out. So yeah. like when the fights are there and the, only the mics, the overhanging mic and side mics, when you hear those punches, you're like, damn, that really fucked. You can see how in respect yeah, a little bit more. Even a stiff jab, yeah, that could rip you know could rip a freaking cheekbone or something. Yep. I love fighting. Love it. I love it. I love that you guys love fighting because I'm like, fuck yeah. Like, there's that's our, you know. I don't know how. I obviously have been in the UFC like since you've known me. Yeah, you've always been like a big UFC guy. We started getting the UFC fights because you were all like, let's get the fight. We're like, why? Yeah. Why why is it so cool? Is it such like glorified boxing? And then, oh yeah, we started getting on the tour buses. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. And then you got us all. Then now we're all hooked. Yeah. I mean, I mean, just pretty much just me, you, and Eddie, I think, but. Yeah, Alex doesn't care. He don't care. Mark either. Mark is just like, I just want, I just want to chill. Yeah, <laughs> yeah Mark's like, he, he'll watch yeah, it. He'll he, watch yeah, it. He wants to, you know, it's it's a, it's a social event. We're all, we're all hanging yeah. out, being friends. Mark, you know, and cool. he can write down ten fighters' names, I think. Yeah, yeah. 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 But like when yeah. Eddie was down, he would come. Eddie watched. He'd come, he'd come with me to the gym. He came to Team Quest. or Dan had Dan, Dan Henderson's athletic fitness center. You know. Yeah, yeah dude. Dan, yeah, dude. Eddie came out a few Both times. You guys, we did. Uh, Eddie's we girlfriend. Did, uh, Eddie's girlfriend is like obsessed. Fights? That's why he calls his girlfriend the female Dan Kenny. Nice. Yeah, that's it. I'm like, wow. Because sometimes we talk to each other, I'm like, it's like talking to myself. <laughs> about, about scraps? <laughs> we talk about scraps, fucking pretty much just mainly talk about scraps. She knows a lot of shit. That's but awesome. She watches them. As soon as the prelims start, she's watching every single one. She's like, what do you think of fucking, you know, blah, 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 blah. I'm like, damn. Makes total sense. I'm yeah. like, you know all that's these people sick, just, like, just like I do. Yeah, she's, she's super into it. That's right. Some people are like... Um, it's not Asperger's. It's it's something else. It's just like when you're so hooked on something and you just want to know everything about it. Eclectic. I don't know. No. It's kind of like how I I there's certain categories. So certain categories I just know like so much shit about it. You know. Yeah. Which like I could have just learned about other stuff too, but I'm all right. <laughs> I'll just stick to my lane. Like you know, ten yeah. ten times more fighters than I know, dude. It's, it's like oh my god. It's a, it's a dorky no thing that I, my girlfriend thinks I'm such a nerd, but. Hey, she's a nerd. if it makes me happy, exactly. fuck off. Exactly. Yeah. Dude, if, if you, if Own you, that nerd. If, yeah. the, if you're passionate I'm, about it. And I'm the lucky guy who gets to watch it every weekend. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah, dude, you're passionate about it. There's nothing wrong with that nope. at all. If you're passionate about it, you enjoy it. It's always there for me. Yeah. Unless it gets bad for some reason, which it won't. It won't. No, no. Dana White will find a way. They'll be underground he'll, fights, he'll, dude. He'll, fucking f- he'll, he'll have fights on the fucking moon if he can. S- seriously. On Mars if he dude, can. Dude, so, so did, did you hear about... Here's a topic of conversation. Did you hear about WWE making new rules today? No. Really? I didn't hear So that. there's no more chair shots. Really? Oh, no. To the head. To the head. Okay. That's like... The worst. The headshots were the best part. But there's mm-hmm. no more. There's no more slapping your leg when you head kick someone. You know when you like. You can't Shawn, say, you can't sell Shawn, the kick. When Shawn Michaels would sell the kick, like when you kick Ric Flair in the face, yeah. and you hear like a smack. You yeah. can't do that anymore. No, no, no more sweet chin music. No, you can kick, but you can't make the slap noise anymore. Damn no more it. sweet chin music. That sells the kick. And then also, I heard they're toning down the sexiness of the ladies. Oh God! Again. Like, California sucks, man. I don't do the taking movies. Take that shit to Texas. Dude, None of those rules They're taking, their, taking like, fucking... Fuck, kick their head off, dude. So Keep yeah, the girls w- hot. W- if the girls w- want to be hot, let them be hot. Who gives a fuck? WWE's getting a little more watered down than it already was. Yeah. And then fucking... True. Disney is taking shit off there because of shit. Yeah. Dr. Seuss. It's weird how everything... They're letting all... No offense to anyone. I don't give a fuck. Live your life. 
no disrespect to anyone, but they're letting all the pussies get away with fucking everything. It's like, nah, dude, like, with life, you, like, there's, like, it comes back good or bad, and Ugh. either way, you gotta deal with it. Yeah. I can see how some shit's offensive, and it's like, all right, dude, yeah, yeah pull that, you know, definitely I mean, pull that. I how many it's, people it's are, up, but still. There, one out of a hundred people are sensitive to that, or something, maybe? One out of a thousand? I guess, I don't know. I could go on for days about this, but that shit sucks. Dude, I'm trying to see sucks, a slap man. kick. I'm trying to see some chair headshots. But good That's thing, what I'm saying. Good thing I can still watch some old shit. I'm like awesome in... Uh, you take it off the network, though, I'm going to be pissed. Yeah. Hey, Mankind matches, I'm going to be very upset. How many times did freaking Undertaker launch him off that cage? Three? Two. I think. Oh, two. Two. Do you hear Fucking wreck this shit. I, I love... Dude, oh, it's just like literally like, last, last month, like going on YouTube, listening to interviews of both uh, Mick Foley and uh, Undertaker talking about that. Hell in a Cell match, yeah. so fascinating. It had the, both of their of their head spaces. Mick Foley, by far, his mental where where he was at in that moment, like just oh, amazing. Didn't his teeth go through? A his true legend. The one? Mick yeah. Foley is a <sighs> fucking legend. Dude. I hope he, Beast. dude. I was w- just watching his last ECW matches the other day. I'm just going, I know. Going, wow. this guy is is fucking insane. Am I cutting out? He's like the Mike Metzger of freaking wrestling. Like, Mike Metzger had took so many injuries being, like, the godfather of freestyle motocross. That's cool, oh, yeah. for sure. Dude, I, w- I hope that he got fucking bonused out or something. Dude. Had to. Hopefully. Had to. Because well, his daughter wrestles, right? So I didn't mean to interrupt. Yeah. No, his daughter doesn't wrestle. She doesn't wrestle? I heard she's hot, though. She's very good looking. It's Rick it's awesome. Flair's daughter. Rick Flair's daughter wrestles. wrestles. Yeah, she's she's Charlotte. Charlotte. Yeah, have, she's a specimen. Have you heard the uh, what uh, how Vince always had Rick, like Rick Flair's back? I heard that he didn't always have his back. Really? Yeah. Because he, he would go from WCW back to WWF, back to WCW, back to WWF. Because WCW was Turner, right? Yeah, Ted Turner. Yeah. I heard something like Ric Flair was injured and like Vince was always calling him, see if he was all right, or like something like this. It was pretty recent, I think. I'm sure Vince has this fucking fish fishbowl of uh, the certain people he really cares about. And For like, sure. Like, sure. Def- all the pioneers of the sport. I would think Andre the Giant dead for damn sure. I mean, sure. I don't know. There's also certain, like, fighters that are probably close-knitted with Dana and text and stuff, but there's also fighters sure. that don't text with Dana. And don't, yeah. yeah. Like, there's also there's probably wrestlers that, like, they could call Vince without feeling weird. Of course. Or text him, yeah. even. Yeah. And then, but there's some, yeah. there's some wrestlers that are probably like, oh, I'm scared of the yeah, boss. Yeah, I'll go through my agent yeah, to talk yeah, about yeah, that. Yeah, I'll tell my agent yeah. to talk yeah. to yeah. him. Yeah. yeah. But you know, it's those moments where, like, even though you're scared of texting him, like, just text him. Yeah. yeah. Text him. Whatever. That was like at your 30th birthday when Hendo fought, uh, what's his name? Not Mark Hart, but uh, Tim Bosch. Tim Bosch. I was texting him, hey, dude, the headbangers want to see a knock on, knock him the fuck. K N F O. And he texts back, that's why he's a like, thanks, bro. I did, haha. And I was like, fuck yeah, dude, that was sick. Yeah, man. Dude, thanks, up, man. Hendo, dude. I did but, knock him out. The goat, dude, that guy hit so fucking hard. Thank God I didn't eat one of his punches. The whole time I was like sweating bullets. Like, oh, fuck, yeah. he's watching me train. No, thanks, man. No, thanks. Yikes. Good, dude. You I went to, you, I like you went to a couple team. of the pig roasts with me. We parted over just bad. Hell yeah. Slept I invited we, this guy, too. We, fucking, was, we slept at his house, dude. Yeah, I woke up in the living room. Like, yeah. oh. I woke up like kind of like the movie The Hangover at yeah, Dan Henderson's sure. house. Shoot, shoot by the yeah. Dan Henderson has a huge house, and I wake up, and I wake up in his living room. It's got nice-ass couches, all this shit. I wake up. kind of like ass deer mantled up. Kind of like The Hangover, the where I'm looking around, like, and I'm all like still kind of like, <laughs> in my head, all yeah. hungover. I'm like, first, my first thought is, where the fuck am I right now? Like, <laughs> And then I realize, oh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I slept at Dan Henderson's house. Yep. Hell yeah! <laughs> he woke up. He's like, "Hey guys, I know. Want some breakfast?" <laughs> that was that was a fun '80s uh, Halloween party. Oh yeah, dude! It's like you went as Ultimate Warrior. Yeah, yeah. I went as Batman, thinking we were gonna be the 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 Avengers, or not the Avengers, Justice League. Tom and Stephanie, Tom Colicchio, Stephanie, his wife. They were like, "Yeah, we're gonna be um, Superman and Wonder Woman." And then Sam Alvey texts me, and he's like, "Yo, dude, I want to get Justice League on lock. I'm gonna be." Uh, Another character. And I'm like, all right. Well, I went out and bought that freaking costume for that reason. I go there. No one's dressed up as <laughs> Justice League. I'm like, you bastard. <laughs> they did it to you. Pulled a prank. Like, like always. Dude. Love those dudes. That was a good memory. I think Sam has a fight coming up at the end of the month. Ashley Yoder, Spider Monkey. She fights this weekend against Angela Hill. And then Sam has a fight at the end of the month. And I got a friend getting ready for the Ultimate Fighter because they're bringing that show back. I can't say who because... Sworn to secrecy, but one of my homies is going. You tell me in the car. It could be. <laughs> when I, now, when I say homie, that's freaking, you know, non gender. It's neutral. It's, it could be, I, have, I have homies. I have, I have friends. A, I have a have, feeling I know who it is. Of course you do. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I know that show's coming back. It's going to be. The, they're going to have all the fights at the Apex again. Yeah, of course. Nice. Uh, my buddy Keith, you guys know Keith. He just competed in uh, Eddie Bravo's The High Rollers in Vegas and 
So let me get this straight. They I make, was able they, to go out there they and make, his corner. They make you smoke weed, and then you have to do jujitsu against somebody? Yeah. Everyone's just getting high. You like, have to be high? Like, I think if you don't smoke, they make sure that you and your opponent, okay, rip this. Okay. And then now go to When play. are they doing wow. shit face boxing? That's what, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. That's what I dude, it's, it's called bare knuckle box, and they do it in fucking UK, dude. I watch really? that shit on YouTube all the time. Yeah, I love dude. that shit. Those guys are fucking crazy. One guy comes in and he's like Mickey from fucking Snatch. They're like propping him up after a week, you know? And he's just going in there and they're fighting in a bunch of fucking hay bells. I love watching that shit. I'm like, fuck yeah, dude. Yeah, but high <laughs> high jujitsu, that's just like It's the best, dude. I remember it really being, is. I remember being a kid and smoking a bunch of weed. And we went to the track for some reason by my high school. And I was doing I was running and jumping and doing three sixties in the air. I kept running. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I kept fucking eating shit and falling. On the sand or on like, on the sand. Like right. it would hurt, but I was just like I ever since then I, I don't know how people could drive cars down. People could do like uh, like Yeah. Not even like driving is simple, sure. Yeah. But stoned, I can't even fucking Make a hard boiled egg stone, you well, know? Back before USADA made a United States anti doping agency, before they made weed off the freaking list of banned substances, you know, like everyone knows for sure Nick Diaz got popped for like five year suspension, which was bullshit. Yeah. My it's buddy Fernando Gonzalez got the same thing when he was scrapped in Bellator, you know, the Minute for Maniac. They yeah. Were like, oh, you know, he's not taking steroids. It's like, oh, weed. It's like, dude. Weed, if anything, is not a freaking fight. Yeah, no. <laughs> if anything, it's gonna slow you down. Well, like, it makes you, I don't it want makes you, fire right now. It makes you more methodical. It's like grabbing a Rubik's cube, and you're like, if you're if you're lit, you're like, all right, you're like, this is like, this is this is the fucking path I'm going on. I guess that's a good point. It's true. Like that's why a lot of stoners play video games that have a bunch of levels and shit. Of course, because they'll sit or, there or and play guitar. They'll do it. <laughs> I've never played a show stoned in my life. Yeah, I'm scared. Have you? No. No, I've, I, done, I I've done a show where I'm completely blacked out shit face and don't remember a fucking note, but never stoned. <laughs> never stoned. Dude, there's a show I, I feel like I got on stage, I played four riffs, and got off stage. I played for like 45 minutes right there. Nice. I don't even remember that. There's nothing to brag about, but holy shit, what? <laughs> how do I do that? But you, you get me that hammered wasted, I can't play anything but like suicide songs. I can't play Same. I can't play Nirvana or fucking Alice in Chains wasted. I just can't. I don't know why. You got that deep mu- muscle memory. That, yeah. That's that that's why that's that that's why we muscle fucking memory, practice dude. so much. That, that's why you train so much. It's so like when you're just like, oh yeah. Yeah. You Your body's fucking automatically do it, good. dude. Yeah, you exactly. can fucking do it. That's yeah. why we practice so much. If you could do it like fucking half asleep almost. But yeah, it's a weird thing that your brain will do. Well, there's a guy at the gym, uh he's he's legally blind. He's like ex uh military or police and so they saw so, something dedicated, but he he's a blue belt, two stripes, and he's legit. Because in jujitsu, you could honestly put a blindfold on, and you could feel the bodies, you know, physics, oh, yeah. and you could roll through. And if they're trying to sneak something with your eyes, then you can't help that because you're you know you got no vision. But this guy's a legit blue belt, dude, and it's cool. Damn, blue mm-hmm. belt, blind blue belt. Yeah, have you heard that band? No, pretty blind, sick band. Yeah. yeah, blind blue belt. Really. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just joking. Good old fucking Triple B, man. Oh, triple B. <laughs> triple B from Nova Scotia, dude. They're sick. There's two, just three big ass death metal look, looking Bs. But right. is, that, is that Triple B, man? Wow. Wow, Triple Bs. Is, is, is that Triple Blue Belt? Is that Triple Black Belt? Dude. That'd be sick. The Bs backwards and the giant T behind it. <laughs> Dang, dude. That's what's up. I'm glad that you now you and Cece were saying that you guys want to uh, learn the ground game. You know, because that's like another aspect of martial arts, you know, because yeah. I think you need five to make a fist of to be a mixed martial artist. You obviously need boxing, kickboxing, wrestling for damn sure, jujitsu, and then just all around like cage tactics. Yeah. And then like, now you keep fucking. Yeah, you know. guys, if you want to learn fighting stuff, go to Nick. You want to learn board games? Come on over. I'll teach you how to play all of them. That's why it's why we have good friends. Each person has their own thing. Oh, dude. Yeah, no. it's not me. Yeah. It's it's who I get my tutelage from. And I'm like, yo, dude, oh, obviously you guys, they know, you know, they all like, know It's like you that guys. commercial. Kindness. Pass it on. Exactly. It's, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. it's like fucking head kicks. Pass it on. <laughs> oh, <laughs> my God. <laughs> Card games, board games. Pass it on. Well, because I remember uh, you guys were on tour with Megadeth some shit. And like it ended quick. And I texted him like, yo, what happened? I thought you guys were tipping out. I heard it on the radio. And he's You're like, really bringing this up right now, motherfucker? No, I'm saying it's like, <laughs> it was like Do talking it. about martial arts and I was like yo come into the gym and learn from Coach Daniel and Coach Daniel's son's a headbanger and I, I found that out and we're all at you know the whole gym together we're at a fight night and the kid could give a shit about the fights he'd been there on his whole life so he's on his phone like yeah whatever so I go over and talk to him I'm like hey you play guitar and then he's like yeah I'm like, what do you play he's all a Schecter Avenger I'm like oh it's a metal guitar I'm on my buddies endorsed by Schecter and when I told him Chris he was like 
that's like my favorite guitarist ever. And he runs over to his dad, and his dad, he runs back, and he talks to his dad in French. He, he's French and uh, Portuguese, the one mom, Leah, is from Brazil. And then he's like, tell your friend to come in to the gym for one hour free private with my dad to sign my guitar. And that's why I was like, yo, you need to come learn from, like, the man himself, Daniel Veron. Yeah, yeah. And then not not even a month later, I get that text where he's like, yo, I need to talk about something important. That's what he says. And I'm like, oh, fuck, what's wrong, right? Then he's like, I want to come train. I was like, fuck, yeah, dude. With, coach, time. with coach Daniel, too. Coach Sick. Daniel, man. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah. I got very, so blessed. I mean, now the older I get, the more, like, how lucky we were, dude. That's what I'm saying. That dude. guy's got a fucking resume for days. Yeah, Everyone. Man. Everyone. So what an honor. That kick that, uh, what's his name? Anderson landed on Vitor, and also... Um, the front kick? That cheap kick. The one that lets us not even say his name, try to take to credit for Yeah, it. I knew. I'm like, it, I'm like that's I know exactly kick. what that fucking kick is. Yeah, he's done it dude. a million times. With the, the one class. Machida did to Randy? Yep. And then uh, somebody tried to do it to Dan, but Dan just parried it off the forearm. Oh, yeah. He, he saw it coming a mile away. That kick is more popular than we think. It's just we don't ever see it in huge fights because people don't get hit with it. It's a quick... Yeah. It's like the quick uppercut from your foot. Dude. Oh, my God. It's insane. I see it thrown all the time now. Yeah. Like last weekend, yeah. I, I saw it thrown a bunch, but I, no one was landing it. I think, honestly, this is my you know opinion on it. I think back in the day, we'd always see movies where people were like, up, hit the nose, and oh, so it yeah. goes to your brain and kills you. Yeah. So I think people think when you hit with the pad of your foot, if they hit that, they're fucking donezo. So it's yeah. like, you know, aim for the jaw. Yeah, of course. Of course. <laughs> Shout out to a Coach Daniel. Yeah. Yeah, he's head Muay Thai coach in uh, Paris, France at uh, Venom. Is he at France now? Yeah, he's, he's back, back home. He's back in home. France now, yeah. huh? Wow. My family's there, the kids are there. One of the sons are here. I think the headbanger he's still out Well, when we play yeah. France, we should try to get his kid out of show. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, Alex is a great kid, too. Yeah, really, really cool kid. Super metalhead or what? Metalhead. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yeah. Dude, I can't, I'm so excited to fucking play shows, places like France again. Like, can't wait to I'm see I'm not the biggest there, European, dude. like, I'm not the, not the biggest fan of being over there, being so far away from home. But right now, dude, I, I'll put me there for... Three months, I don't give a shit. I'm no, done. Yeah. I'll play. Yeah. I'm tsh, France. I'm down. I know, man. Uh, DK, let's let's hear what what you really feel about this. Where, when do you think touring at a full capacity will come back? Summer of next year. Yeah. Yeah. I think but, still we have over a year to go and some change. They're gonna vaccine the world and hopefully. I don't even. I mean, like, there's places like Australia that fucking beaches are packed, no masks. No yeah. COVID cases. Yeah. They're doing some shit right over there, dude. Yeah. They're not trying to push the vaccine. No. I mean, are they or no? no. They're no. not trying to push yeah, the vaccine. Yeah, they don't need that's to. Why that's why there's yeah. no COVID cases. Dude, nobody... I, they don't have, like, any COVID... Miss I mean, COVID's real. That's for damn sure, but... Yeah, yeah. I think touring world, my guess, would be summer next year. I was on the same boat as you. Yeah. But that's when I think it'll come back. And it won't yeah. be... Yeah. Full sale. It, full sale <laughs> tours. Life, life nor, like, normal tours that we would do yeah. a couple years ago yeah. will be happening... Like that. I hope so, man. I think. There'll be tours happening soon. Like, we'll, bands will be doing two weeks of, like, yeah. weird places. Yeah, yeah. But no, not normal, like, you know, not your normal month-long tour. I don't think that's happening for a while. Of course. Which sucks, because... Yeah. But, I mean, I guess the longer I have to wait, the more exciting it's going to be to get back out there. It's like, holy yeah. shit, I forgot how fucking all this shit works. Imagine how hard that yeah, audience not saying is going to go. Just the fans, because look how passionate you, know, you guys saying, are. You guys are the professional musicians, but the fans that love you guys around the world, sick, you guys are on stage dude. going hard as fuck, and they're in the audience. There's going to be some fights, for sure. Dude, fucking pits. No, hope, there's hopefully fights. There's, don't, there might be Hopefully just, there's no fights. Hopefully there's just be, pits. I think it'll just be hugs, to be That's honest. That's what I'm saying. People hugging strangers like, can't believe it's back. Aww. Fucking seeing my sugar. Oh, this is great. That'd be sick as fuck, dude. Yeah, dude, I pers I can't wait for just to go to a show either. You yeah. know, because I'm a fan first and foremost. Also, yeah, that's like, what got I'm, you. Yeah. That's what got you to be sure, a musician, man, right? Being yeah. a fan of fucking music. Yeah, I was looking at dates of sh shows I went to. Like, I went saw Cannibal Corpse and Morbid Angel in 2019. I'm like, that was sick. That's ass so dude. feels Fuck so yeah. long ago. Was that the at the uh, observatory? I went to that one and San Diego. North, North oh, yeah, you went to both, right? <laughs> I went to both. That was nice. sick. So Trey, Trey's the way. Trey is the way. Shout out to a Trey from. Morbid Angel, they're a big influence on Suicide Sounds, and plus Trey being such a pioneer with the uh, semi-string, which, I mean, if you look at the dates, I mean, them and Korn were kind of around the same time where Trey was bringing in the uh, semi-string, so such a pioneer ahead of his time. They had to know of each other, too. I but, wonder. I mean, yeah. I don't know. Dino, Fear, too. Shout Fear out. Factory, yeah, Fear, yeah. yeah, same thing. Yeah. And Limp Bizkit was there later, I think. But later, they, yeah. But damn, they... If you look at the days, do you like yeah, we got Dino, uh, Corn, and uh, Trey does not get enough credit for the time they were really 
bringing in the center string in like a new uh, heavy way. Yeah. You know, that's just a shout out to a, to a Trey. Yeah, I remember I have that Roadrunner United DVD and fucking loved it. And then D- your guy's buddy Dino's on. I don't know him. Yeah. I remember he was on stage when you had John uh, JD on here talking about when your 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 rig fucking the quad box dropped out. Yeah. And I saw Dino right there. My I rig? Did, yeah. During uh, the Knotfest. Uh, oh yeah, Glenn Hill. yeah. John's first uh, first uh, time I think working it, for if us. If you've been if you've been a fucking musician for long enough as me, you'll yeah, she'll I, say when your shit dropped out, which time? Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it, happened, had, it better happen a hundred times, yeah. and then fucking one year, oh, shit. it happens. And then, what's wrong with my rig? I don't know. Well, because I saw I saw the run going back in the LED on the. Have you ever seen John Douglas running? Like, you know something's up. Oh, he was yeah, power yeah. sliding to the to try. <laughs> if you see a power sliding, slide. something's really up. I was trying to help him. I'm like, yo, dude, there's no there's no power going to his rig, and he was like, he was like scrambling, like fuck, 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 trying to fix it. And I'm like, I'll step back and not trying to help. That yeah. that's gotta be like the worst anxiety too. I know. Imagine if that. like the band, if the, if the band you're working pressure. for is playing a pretty big fucking show and huge, something huge breaks humongous. or something. I was blessed to be able to too. roll it's like, up to you guys on that stage. I was like, "Fuck yeah, dude!" It's like uh, it's like NASCAR. It's like being in the pit crew, and you have like the less time you fix it, the better you are. Ugh. That's like me dropping my mouthpiece in the fight, and then or DK go wash it out in the bucket real quick. And you're like, "Fuck, fuck, 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 fuck!" Like real quick. Oh, like when Michael Bisping did that. Yeah. He, well, nice. people people spit him out on purpose to get that extra five seconds. Uh, or like if you're getting like say I'm getting rocked there's fighters that they're just telling me okay, I'll, kick them in the I'll nuts t- I'll tell you the truth you get, you get one get a jail free card to get, I, gather your bearings and get back out well, of the, like, the, 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 the difference is I had never tried for my rig to go out ever <laughs> of course yeah of course Dude, that's the worst feeling. I hate it. It's so annoying. It sucks. That's like like Pat from Cannibal Corpse when his rig would go out he would I think he got to the point where he's just like Fuck it. Keep going. No, he's just like he just stops playing and just walks off stage. <laughs> oh shit. Yeah. Dude, he doesn't give a shit. He's he like fuck, fuck stop working. It's yeah. like this fucking sucks. It's not working. I could, I could. He has that. the, he had the worst luck I've ever seen on any guitar player ever of his rig just stopping. Damn. Because in face of the way their rig is, it's so simple. It's like okay, cable, wall, head, cab. If this shit, shit goes wrong, it's like where do you start? Yeah. It's like what the fuck is wrong? I started power source. And it's always like when we tour with them, sound check is always perfect. Oh, so sick. of course, of course it is. Yeah, that's when you we sound were... check individually. But when you get everyone going at once, boom, power drops. Dude, Maybe totally. that's for sure. That's what happened. Some shit. Yeah, my I'm looking at fucking. That's when, the worst feeling ever. When we were uh, touring with them, it was such a sick tour. Eddie's first U.S. tour w- with us at the Mayhem, with uh, with Corn and Cannibal on the same lineup. I uh, think we we were you know at, uh, there was a was, at, at, after party and we we're fucking all getting hammered. And then I had I had the balls to talk to uh, Pat, the uh, dude, because 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 we also had off shows with uh, Cannibal line, yeah. lined up, and I I was like, hey Pat. Can I play a rig? <laughs> 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 because he has the fucking old school Mesa uh, duels. Yeah. And he has the old school ones, which is like, that's with like the, with my the fucking, shit. With the metal zone too, huh? With the metal zone. A and modded, then, modded one. So I, I fucking creep in the venue. I, I seen it be like oh. remembered. Yeah. And then once they're done, he's like, Give me a hand. Yeah. Yes. I, yeah. I, remember, yeah. I remember that, dude. Fuck. That, what you're, an you're, honor. You're, you're like, it's, it's so much different than my chug, but so sick. Well, because I remember the reason I brought up Dino and shit at that show at Knotfest was because um, on Roadrunner United DVD, he's talking about how Max was like, you don't need seven strings to be hard. And then how Max yeah. later went to like started playing some seven string shit. And I was like, dude, for what, real. What made and you then guys he took go... off the bottom three just to have a four string That's guitar? Dude, that's so sick, dude. So what made you go from six string to seven and then you at, on bass as like four to five? Oh, I, I know his answer. I know mine too. Yeah. I'd love to hear him because I don't no, know. No, no, Garza has to go first. Corn. Right, go uh, uh, yeah, so Cor- Garza sees Corn and goes, right. shit, I want to sound like that. I want to, so, yep. I, I want to look, I want to, well, seven strings is heavy. Seven and strings, then, I, A, I, I move, tuning. And then yeah. I, yeah. Move, I move from four four strings to five strings to be in two sets outs. <laughs> to, to, to match tone or just for No, the, no, just I needed to have it. So nice. like, like my first tour was Suicide, I played a four string. And I was like, just, I had two of those fuckers low for it didn't work out that well but it worked at the time you made, made it work DK, yeah. uh, DK walked in with the I've been in sound gear right four yeah. string still got it and Fuck we yeah. were in this room fucking rocking out yeah it was sick <laughs> yeah. four stringer I didn't even wasn't, I never even played a five yet in my life and then wow then we got we got me a five string and then I started playing with the five string and I'm like oh god I'm never going back yeah it's too wow. too perfect for metal for the kind of metal I like to play no. Yeah. yeah, now now I play a four string, it feels like 
It's like a fucking toothpick. It feels like I'm wearing like a size six shoe or something. It just <laughs> doesn't it doesn't fit anymore. That toothpick with a fucking fretboard on it. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> it's like this doesn't feel good. That's fucking awesome. Oh my god, you guys hungry? Oh, I've been thinking pizza this whole damn time, dude. I, mean, I it, it, it's, it's been crossed my mind the past uh, hour and a half. To be honest, I'm fat. I'm on a, I'm on a diet, so I'll only eat about five or six pizzas. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're not. You're not. I'm not. I had a salad okay. today though. So nice. there you go. That's a perfect excuse to. I didn't eat carbs on purpose. No, we're gonna belly flop face first and just some fucking. Where are we here. going? Lamp post. We'll probably go to Graziano's. It's. Did uh, you see that place down there called Porky's Pizza? Over Porky's. by Albertsons, where Albertsons, where we got the. Yeah, it's all right. Oh, that's all right. Yeah, I mean, well, catchy, catchy. Where, fucking where we're going is it outside or no? It's inside. Graziano's. Like, open. Dude. It's super chill. They close at nine, but they're they're super chill. They're just uh, up the street here, and they got a uh, solid pizza. It's closet, great fries. Lamp posts, I know right now, they'll be packed outside. They got the hunting games, air hockey, well, and they, they don't yeah. have Street Fighter 2, which sucks. Hopefully. Yeah. Yeah, let's get some food. I'm down. All right, cool. Ho- so, yeah, fuck ho- it. We're, we're going to get food right now. And hopefully, <laughs> hopefully, episode five was all right. No, it was great. Thank you guys for, for being here. Uh, where can people find you as far as the IG handles or uh, anything coming up or yeah, anything? I'll, be, I'll, be, at, I'll be at my house. Cool. Playing board games. No, uh, at Dan Kenny on everything. Hit me up. Facebook, Instagram. Facebook is personal, it. but we got Instagram and Twitter. I'll talk to you there. Shoot. But you can check out my Depop too if you want to buy a shirt. That's what I'm saying. Cool. Dude. There you go. Plug it. Okay, cool. You Nick? Me, it's Instagram, everything else follows it's underscore Nick Vega. And then Facebook, there's no underscore, it's just Nick Vega. And then Twitter is just underscore Nick Vega. Nick Vega is the flying jalapeno. He's the man. Yeah. Flying so jalapeno. if you look it up, it says flying jalapeno. That was my fight name. Um, my old bandmate and my first coach gave me, and I had to walk out to a Muay Thai fight with a luchador mask, and it just stuck. It stuck. <laughs> yeah. When things stuck, you, you can't you can't ignore it. Of course, there it is. You know, yeah. Fuck it. I have a feeling that after uh, the, uh, the next UFC fight, we're probably gonna watch it because it, it's a good one. We're probably gonna come right back here. For sure. <laughs> I'm gonna, yeah. We gotta, we gotta refresh. Garza will have his his own fight companion. Hell yeah, that's what I'm saying, dude. For sure. I was we thinking about do. it. It's not on purpose. It's, it has felt natural. I want to get you guys on, and then after a fight, it's just fun. I appreciate you having my uh, opinion on fights over here, dude. Honestly, like, because I remember back in the yeah, day. Man. Remember when Anderson Silva kicked freaking Whiteman in the shin, and he flamingoed his, his shin, and you guys, were like, oh, yeah. and I was like, I'm all guaranteed. You're coming to the gym. I'm gonna show you how not to do that, because I've done that to my shin, or I almost snapped it in, in, when I fought in Indiana. And uh, I got x-rays on my legs, and I have 17 microfractors on my shins from catching elbows, freaking kneecaps, got shin to shin. Got got ding, so dingus leg. Dingus, dingus shins. Dingus shins. <laughs> microfractors. Ever heard of that yeah. band, dude? Dingus shins? I want to see that shirt, though. They're from Kentucky. Dude, Kentucky. Tie, tie that shirt. <laughs> They're sick, dude. They're from Lexington. All right, who oh would win God. in a fight? Colonel Sanders from uh, KFC or fucking Ronald McDonald in their prime. Box and match only. <laughs> they're oh, the pri- in, their prime. in their prime. They never age, dude. I they're know. the same. Ronald McDonald, because I bet under that, that clown shit, he's fucking ripped. He's ripped. Closet ripped. Yeah, and Colonel Sanders. Is, Colonel Sanders is old as fuck. He probably always boxed, has been. He, he probably boxed but, on a freaking... Air, but he, air, is, he, uh, is a, he is a heavyweight, probably. Yeah, yeah. he's got that. He's got, <laughs> he's got butter in his hands. All right. All right. Aunt Jemima or Miss Butterworth before we go? Oh, Aunt fuck. Mama just she fuck her up on. Huh? Oh yeah, she's got that fucking hardest fuck, dude. You don't fuck with me mentality, you know. Mm-hmm. Fuck yeah. All right, everyone. Thank you for watching, listening. Till then, later.